hello everybody happy friday and welcome back to my channel today we are doing a little live stream to talk about all the shit going on with dave hollis um so just as like a you know i'll, I'll give a little overview of how this is gonna go first of all i'm gonna girl start apologizing because i'm sorry that i was not able to get this as like an official like edited video and that I'm doing it as a live stream instead. There's a reason for that. And that reason is that I got back from New Orleans on Wednesday, um, which made it kind of fun because RK and I in, in New Orleans got to watch Dave's thing live together in person. So that was kind of fun. Um, and this was right after we had finished Dave Hollis week on Your Morning Guru. So that was fascinating. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be going live today. The way that I'm planning to do this stream, because there is a lot to cover and I have a feeling we're going to be here for a long time, but I know that not everyone has a long time to watch lives. And I know that when there's a replay, sometimes people are like, oh no, there's, there's like three, four hours of live. What am I going to do? My plan for this, I'm I'm plan when this is done to put timestamps in the description for the replay. And my plan is to just go over everything as it happened first. Um, and if people want to talk in the chat, feel free to talk. I won't be able to respond to comments at first because I don't want it to take like four hours to get through everything. So we'll get through everything first. We'll discuss it all first. I will prioritize super chats uh, if they come in during that time. And then after we're done with all of that, then we'll head to the chat and hear what everyone has to say. And we'll continue the discussion from there because I'm sure there's going to be a lot to talk about. Jim Dobre. Oh man. I didn't know how many uh, fellow Polish speakers were in the audience. I say that like I'm fluent in Polish. I'm not, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm still learning. Um, so let's, uh, let's take a look at everything that's happened with Dave. So brief context, brief context for everybody. Uh, this past about a week ago, um, at the end of October, I believe it was Tuesday, October 25th. I might have that date wrong. 26th. I don't know. That day, Dave released, um, his newest book called Built Through Courage, which I have right here when I was reviewing it on my channel. Uh, this past Friday or last Friday. Now it's been a week. Time isn't real. This uh, last Friday when I reviewed this book on my channel, I had to review it from the NetGalley arc because I ha had left the next day to go to New Orleans and this book hadn't arrived yet. So now I have the official version of it. I did order it. So any hate that Dave has for people who didn't buy his book, I, I bought it. I bought the book. It is right here in my hands, Dave. I bought it months ago. I pre-ordered it, in fact. Um... So we're going to talk about what happened, but basically the overview is Dave's book came out. Um, I'd say his normal, his usual fans seem to like it. If we take a look at, you know, we're going to look at Amazon and Goodreads. The reviews of it are not bad. Um, here we go. Built through courage, Dave Hollis. We'll take a look at it here and we'll look at it on Goodreads as well. Uh, the reviews of it are not really bad. It's um, like if we pull up here on Amazon. Oh, you guys don't need to see all the Rugrats PlayStation games I have in my Amazon shopping cart. We can get rid of that. <laughs> um, hold on. Here we go. Um, so here it is on Amazon. This is it has 182 ratings on Amazon, which is very good. It's very good. That's a lot of, it's more reviews than any of my books have ever gotten. And it's at four and a half stars, which is fantastic. That is fantastic, a fantastic percentage to have. Most books, once they start getting in the hundreds of reviews, end up in that three and a half to four star range because when your book is selling a lot of copies and a lot of people have read your book, you're bound to run into some people who don't like it. That's just statistically probable. If all your reviews are good, that generally means you haven't reached a wide enough audience because your only audience is the people who have, uh, who would already like the book. Um, so this is the book on Amazon. It's doing pretty well. We can take a look at some of these reviews. Um, but it seems that Dave has gotten a couple negative reviews and is very upset about those. Um, so for example, there's a one star review here that calls it tone deaf word salad, which honestly I would agree with because, uh, this book made, uh, no sense at all. Um, this one's called built through privilege. Here's one about how it's disappointing. So there's a few one star reviews, but then there's a bunch of five star reviews. So Dave's here choosing to focus on the negative. So those are the reviews for that. And then if we take a look at 
uh, that's not the right book. If we take a look at Goodreads as well, and we look at Dave's uh, book on Goodreads, it's got over a four star average, or no, almost a four star average rating. It's got 3.9 star average rating on Goodreads, which is very normal, very normal for, oh, I should, wait, that's the wrong one. That's, that's get out of your own way. Hold up. Yeah, Built Through Courage. Here's Built Through Courage with a 4.11 average rating, which is very good. It's very good for having over 100 ratings to have still that high of an average. So I have no idea what he's so upset about. But uh, here I have it read with, I, I rated it two stars. Um, I probably should have rated it one star, but I felt like being nice. So there's um, a few negative reviews up here, but then there's also some positive reviews. There's also his fans enjoying the book. And that's what you can expect whenever you put a book out into the world. But what happened here was that Dave was not very happy with this. He was not very happy with some of the negative reviews he was receiving. He wasn't happy that he wasn't getting the stereotypical big book tour. And honestly, like, the book probably isn't selling as well as his first book. It definitely isn't selling the way that Girl, Wash Your Face sold. But I think Dave uh, has set his expectations a little too high for this because it's selling a lot better than any book I've ever put out there. Um, but Dave, basically this all started when Dave wrote this long ass caption on Instagram, which we are going to go into right now, where Dave is going to talk about why he's so upset about everything in a way that makes absolutely no sense and is completely wrong. Um, so we're going to go into the Instagram caption. We're going to read through all of that and see what he said. And then we are going to go into his infamous Instagram live two hour long rant. So here we go. Let's head over to the screenshot of the Instagram rant. So this caption on Instagram is so long that not only did it not fit in the caption, but he had to do nine different comments to get it to fully fit. He seems very proud of how long this Instagram caption is. I'm not sure why, but here we go. All right, so Dave says, The emotion of launch week, my longest caption ever. This week is unlike anything I've ever experienced. It was in so many ways the most satisfying week of my professional life, while also being among the hardest. In a launch week of something I'm so overwhelmingly proud of, I'm still floating so heartful, so heartful. Dave. Dave. <laughs> I don't try not to criticize people's writing in Instagram captions because it's very casual, but I'm like, okay. So heartful. Up early on a Saturday to do more in support, but as I tried to consider what picture or video did this week justice, it was this sequence immediately following my half-hearted cell. Discouraged by critics, questioning my handle on truth. I came into this release knowing these things. So Dave is basically saying he felt discouraged by the critics. Now, as you guys have seen, his reviews are, his average is pretty high. He's overall doing very positively on this book. I gave it a negative review because I personally didn't like it. If you read Dave's book and you liked it, good for you. I'm not the book police. You can read and like whatever you want. I've been in fights with people on booktube because I liked a book that someone else didn't like and they were like, oh, how can you call yourself a real writer if you like this trash? And it's like, dude, let people like what they like. If you like Dave's book, good for you. Have a good life. Enjoy reading it. But what Dave is doing here is really reminding me of how Gabby Hanna went off. We talked about that a couple months ago, how, you know, when Gabby Hanna's poetry book was getting some negative reviews, she started going off the handle and she was very rude to Rachel Oates. She was, she was very um, abusive to her and sending a hate mob after her on Instagram just because she got a negative review. Now, Dave has not gone so far as to tag me in anything yet. And I appreciate that. I don't think Dave knows who I am or else I'm sure I would have been blocked because other people have been telling me they've been blocked. Either that or maybe he is planning to tag me in something. I don't know. But my point is every book is going to get negative reviews. We've talked so many times on this channel about how your book is, if you put a book out there, some people are not going to like it. It's going to get some negative reviews. And if you want to act professional as an author, you can look at those reviews and see if there's anything constructive you can learn from it. Or if that person just wasn't your target audience, that book just wasn't for them. You just move on and focus on the, on the people who did like it. Those are really your two options. To attack reviewers just makes you look bad as an author. It makes you look unprofessional. And it makes reviewers afraid to share their real opinions because of how hate could come at them. For example, like we talked about what happened to Rachel Oates with Gabby Hanna 
how Rachel gave a book review, a very in-depth review of Gabby's poetry, and Gabby went on uh, Instagram and tagged her in the stories and went off on her and got all of her fans to start harassing her, and it was so mean, right? We don't do that. That, that leads to reviewers not feeling safe sharing their honest opinion, and that leads to reviewers not being incentivized to want to review books. But as, a, as an author, as someone who wants to be professional in this way, I want people to review my books because all reviews help the algorithm on Amazon and on Goodreads and wherever people leave reviews, it helps those books be seen by more people, which helps it get into more people's shopping carts. You sell more books, the more reviews you have, even if they're negative. That's just how the internet kind of works. So I don't want people to be discouraged from reviews. Anyway, Dave is upset that he's gotten some mild criticism on his book is what it seems right here. So it says, I came into this release knowing these things. Uh, this book is the best thing I've ever created in my long career. It's an absolute slam dunk that you should buy it, that it will change your life, and that the things you desire most life growth will... Dude, <laughs> again, I feel bad criticizing the way an Instagram caption is written because it's an Instagram caption. and But this just like the... It, he has so, like... I'm. <laughs> was he okay when he wrote this is what I'm wondering. Um... So he says, it's an absolute slam dunk that you should buy it, that it will change your life and that the things you desire most life, growth, fulfillment, connection to purpose and living up to your potential are more easily accessible. Okay, so that's the first screenshot I have. Now we got to go to the next one. This is there's there's a lot of screenshots for this fucking caption because Dave, uh, Dave, Dave really wrote a lot. Um, so we're going to head on to point number two in here. Where Dave says, haters stink, but believing their hate is a choice. When mean people leave nasty comments or in feed or reviews on Amazon that disparage a book they haven't read, that's simply a hurt person hurting other people, not a reflection of truth. The book would actually benefit those haters if they were just willing to put the knives down for a minute. So a couple things here. First of all, not every book is for every person. That is normal. That is completely normal. I've written a lot of books in my life. I have 11 books out right now. Not every one of those is going to resonate with every person. And I would not say everybody needs it. If you would just put down your knife as a hater, you would realize it could change your life. No. Like, okay, so I only have one nonfiction book, right? And that is Savvy Business Owner. And that's a book about starting your own business. A lot of people, that book is not going to be interesting to them. I think even like my grandma who buys all my books and loves like supporting me as an author is like, yeah, I didn't buy the business book because I don't, I don't need any, I don't need to learn about business. And I was like, you know what, grandma, that makes perfect sense. You don't need to buy something if you're not going to read it. Like not everything is for everybody. And that is okay. That You're supposed to expect that when you go into any type of career as a creator of something, whether that's as an author or an artist or whatever. So not every book is going to benefit every person. I will say that I read this book and it benefited me in the sense that I can probably pay my mortgage on the ad revenue I got from reviewing it in my cute little Sailor Moon outfit. <laughs> and I got some Sailor Moon thirst trap pics for my Instagram to help get me more engagement. I'd say that's about the way that this book benefited me. But the, the content of the book itself, I, you know, I read this book. I reviewed it. I personally didn't really have much that I learned from it because even though I went into it with an open mind, a lot of the things that are in this book about believing in yourself and getting over your fears, like I've already overcome a lot of those things. I'm already in a place where I have my own business and I'm pretty confident in myself. Like a lot of the stuff in here just, it was too basic. It was basic level. It wasn't stuff I needed. And that's okay. It's not for me. Someone else might read this and be like, yeah, you know what? I'm inspired by this. And good for you. It wasn't for me. Doesn't mean I'm a hater. Just means I didn't like it. Not, not a big deal. All right. So then he continues, the circumstances of this release were wildly different than the last. I would say that's true, mainly that when his first book came out, I think it was pre-COVID. So just the book world in general is completely different. Um, he says... When my last book came out, it was before my marriage ended and I left my job and partnership with my then wife before things around her got even trickier over time. So, yeah, and I feel like that should have been a wake up call to Dave that maybe, maybe he's not the expert on everything just yet. Maybe he's not the expert because in his previous book, we reviewed Get Out of Your Own Way on this channel 
And in that book, he specifically was giving people relationship advice and talking about what makes a good relationship and also had a passage saying, I never take relationship advice from someone who doesn't have a healthy relationship themselves because uh, they don't know what they're talking about. They're not a credible source. And then Dave got divorced like a couple months after that book came out. So I'm like, okay, Dave, so maybe that could have been a sign to you that maybe you don't know everything. Maybe you still have more to know. Maybe you need to understand these things a little better yourself before you're starting to tell other people about them. But again, that's my criticism. If you as a reader liked the book, all good, nothing wrong. Um, he continues by saying, it was this reality of the third point that played with my mind when I went to refresh the Amazon feed to get a sense of how sales looked on Wednesday morning after a successful launch day of radio, morning TV, Instagram lives, and an epic fan meetup. I happened to see the flood of one-star reviews from unconfirmed buyers. Okay. We need to talk about unconfirmed buyers. The, the unconfirmed buyers was just the biggest unprofessional red flag to me in existence. Because this is just a sign that Dave does not understand how book selling works. He does not understand how Amazon works. He doesn't understand how being an author or a book reviewer works, okay? Amazon, uh, he's specifically talking about Amazon reviews. He says he refreshed Amazon and he's looking at the feed of reviews. When you have... When you review a product on Amazon, Amazon will say it'll have a little thing that says verified purchase. If you purchase that thing from Amazon and you're reviewing it on the account that you purchased it from Amazon through, this is how Amazon works. So if you purchase the book somewhere else, obviously Amazon is not going to give you a little verified purchase sticker because Amazon has no way to know that. Amazon isn't connected to your bank account in general. Amazon, I mean, I guess it's connected to your credit card to buy things, but you know what I mean? Amazon doesn't know where else you shop other than Amazon because it's it's only Amazon. I hope that makes sense. So for example, when I post a review of this book on Amazon, it is going to show that I am an unconfirmed buyer. And by that, it doesn't, it doesn't say unconfirmed buyer. It just does, it just doesn't have the little verified purchase tag on it. It won't say verified purchase for me because while I did pay money to buy this book, I did not buy it on Amazon. I have a policy on my channel, which is if I'm buying a book by mediocre to disappointing men, I buy it from a local woman owned bookstore. I bought, that's how I bought Dave Rubin's book. That's how I bought Ben Shapiro's book. That's how I buy Dave Hollis's books. I buy them from a local woman owned bookstore. Unless, unless that man is an independent author whose book is Amazon exclusive because I still want to support the authors who are starting their own small businesses. However, if it is a book that's made, uh, uh, published through a big publishing house, like this one's through HarperCollins Leadership, if it's published through a big publishing house, I buy it from a local woman-owned bookstore because if Dave's benefiting from this, I don't need Jeff Bezos to benefit from this too. I want my local woman-owned bookstores in Chicago to benefit from this. So that's where I bought this book from. Now. Because I bought this book from a small business local bookstore, it does not show up on Amazon that I'm a verified purchase because Amazon, contrary to popular belief, is not tracking my every move and watching me walk down the street to the bookstore, right? So Amazon has no way to know that I bought the book because I didn't buy it from them. So when I go to write a review on Amazon, it is going to be unconfirmed, but I did pay for it. I did buy it and I did read it. Now, let's add a little more to that. When you release a book, we've we talked about this uh, when we did the video on Gabby Hanna's poetry as well and how she sent Rachel Oates an arc of the book. An arc, right? A-R-C stands for advanced review copy or advanced reader's copy, depending. People use them both ways. But basically, an arc is a book that comes out for free that the publisher or the author puts out to generate advanced reviews of the book so that the book will get reviews on Amazon and Goodreads because the more reviews a book has, the more uh, the more it's helpful in the algorithm for people to see the book, the more it's going to boost the book and have people come buy it, right? So, um, so publishers and authors will often send ARCs out, advanced copies of the book for free to reviewers, whether that's a review publication or whether that's reviewers on YouTube or Instagram or just reviewers in general who want to review the book on Amazon and things like that. That book cannot be a verified purchase because it's not a purchase. It's a free copy given out as a promotional item. I was able to get the free copy of the book on NetGalley as a promotional item. 
NetGalley, the, the publisher, HarperCollins, which is Dave's publisher, was giving out free copies of the book, uh, e-copies, free e-book copies of it out on NetGalley as a way to generate some buzz and some reviews for the book before the release. So I got it on NetGalley. I read the book there. Because I got it for free on Net, I got I I purchased it and I got it for free on NetGalley. I if you're if you're uh, late coming here, I explained that at the beginning. It's because uh, I originally had just pre-ordered this, but I was leaving for New Orleans and I didn't get the book in time before I left, and I needed to get the video done before I left. So I uh, got the the ebook copy on NetGalley so that I could get it read ahead of time. But if your publisher is giving out ebook copies or uh, free arcs of your book ahead of time. You want people to review it. That's the whole point of giving out the free copies is that it gets reviewed. So it's wild that Dave is complaining about unconfirmed buyers on Amazon when if you support local bookstores and you believe in your publisher's mission of giving out free copies of the book as promotional items ahead of time, you should expect that some of the reviews on Amazon are going to be from unconfirmed buyers. Doesn't matter if they liked it or disliked it them being an unconfirmed buyer has absolutely nothing to do with whether or not they actually read the book. Those two things are completely irrelevant. So just, Dave, what? Like the unconfirmed buyers thing just absolutely blew my mind how someone could have so such a, a small, like su such a low understanding of what happens in book publishing when he claims to be like this this big time author. So let's continue with this dumbass Instagram caption. Continues in the next screenshot. Uh, and then at the bottom here, he runs out of space in the Instagram caption. So he has to then go to the comments. So he says, uh, angry comments, lame posts. I imagine that my video was a lame post. So Dave says, I'm strong. I know the drill. I have a book where I coach you to ignore the haters, and yet I'm still human. Truth is, it gave a voice to my critic, power to my self-doubt. I cried in a rental car, unconvincingly read from the book about releasing yourself from their barbs. Then Heidi did what Heidi does. She declared the truth when I was believing in lies. Okay, so then we're going to continue uh, into the comments. But first, I want to talk about Heidi real quick. So shout out, first of all, to my friend Camelia. She put out a video this past, she's been killing it actually. She's been putting out tons of videos. Um, we're going to take a look at her video where she basically shows how Heidi didn't even read the book herself. Heidi is over here acting like, um, acting like she, uh, she, she knows what's up with the book. Heidi didn't even read the book. Here's a video clip. So this is Camelia. If you guys haven't seen Camelia's channel, go and give her go out here. I'll give this video a like, go give the video a like and go subscribe to her. Cause she's been covering the situation a lot as well. So here's what she found of Heidi saying. His endorsement for his book. Um, one chapter. I read one chapter. To this day, I've read one chapter of Dave's book. And what's funny is when I read through some of the uh, interactions that we had, I was like, your book is amazing. Bold face lie. Bold face lie. Okay, there you go. Right there, Heidi's been endorsing the book and talking about like, about how this book is gonna change your life. It's okay, Dave. She's like shouting out to all of Dave's fans. Like, if you ever read this book, you need to, it's gonna change your life. Heidi admits right there, she didn't even read it. Heidi didn't even read the book. So Dave's mad at the negative reviewers that didn't read the book, but it's totally fine when his girlfriend who doesn't read the book claims that it's it's so it's so positive. So I think there's another part in this video where she captured Dave on Instagram. Yeah, here it is. So here's Heidi talking about how um debunk a few things because Heidi Paul is actually lying in this video. We're gonna do a little book club on this book. So this is Dave on his book tour. <laughs> we need guys we need to talk about dave's book tour dave's book tour had everything possible go wrong that could go wrong it was almost a comedy of errors uh i feel a little bad for the dude how how wrong it went and i get that i've been in positions where i've had book signings go very very wrong i've been exactly where dave's been where i've like a couple years ago when i was just starting out as an author and i would have a book signing at a store and like two people would show up and i'd want to cry and i'd feel awful about myself i've been there dave like i have been through everything that he's going through right now and you get through it but you don't yell at your followers about it that's not the way to go through it um 
but his book tour, right? So Harper Collins didn't really, I don't think they had a lot of faith in this book. They didn't organize him a big book tour like some of their other big releases. So he, uh, he wanted to go on Good Morning America. Good Morning America didn't want to have him on because they didn't think his book was going to be big enough, which it wasn't. So that morning instead, he went on a live stream with Mel Robbins. <laughs> this has since been deleted, so I can't show it to you guys. And it's good that I can't show it to you because it's it's a violation of privacy. But I'm, I'm going to explain this to you. So Mel Robbins is in her car in like a hospital parking lot doing this live stream. It's like, does she even give a shit about this? So she's live streaming with Dave to release his book. Dave is in a hotel. In the background while he's doing the interview, Heidi walks out of the bathroom, out of the shower, and you can see her naked in the mirror. I didn't see it. I just heard tons of people talking about this. It got deleted. And like, honestly, I feel bad for Heidi in that situation. Like to have yourself get blasted naked all over the place. Like that's, that's horrifying. I feel bad for her. But like, that was the first big thing that went wrong. It's just Heidi shows up naked in the mirror on the live stream. Next thing that goes wrong is apparently uh, for a stop on the book tour, they wanted to, in Arizona, I think near where Heidi lives, there's these four giant silos and they were going to have people show up at these four silos to do a book signing. And so they told all the followers to show up at the four silos. But apparently there's also a restaurant called the four silos. So Dave's like out there with like a little folding table and no one there out in this big field while tons of people show up at this restaurant instead. And like the wait staff gets very upset. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's the second thing that went wrong. Third thing that went wrong is that the book started arriving to people with pages printed upside down. I, there were some pictures on Reddit of people who had gotten the book and the pages were printed upside down. So this whole thing has just been a mess. Uh, <laughs> so Dave, uh, during this book tour, while he's struggling, he's in the car and he's getting uh, upset about the book and Heidi decides to try to help him out for the next 40 days oh i was reading the comments you're reading the yeah, comments i want to say something say I'm something come cry. on but as i hear you encourage them to buy the book like you you are held back by what those people that might not like it would say you guys it is the greatest book it <laughs> truly you. is the greatest book okay First of all, okay, so she's in there going, it's the greatest book. Also, G. Walsh, I want to give you a shout out. Thank you so much for the super sticker. I really appreciate that. Um, so Heidi's in there talking about how, yeah, and then Heidi's going to talk about how it changes lives. We could benefit from it. And the only ones that could not are the people who have a block that are saying. Oh, now Indeed. we're getting an ad. Sorry, guys. One second on the ad. There we go you know, telling a story of why they could not. But truly, I am witnessing in real time, you, the author, and I said it in my post last night, actually very courageously entering into a space and doing a thing that it, I would have a hard time doing. You're so sorry. Where's the clip of Shane Dawson going, you are fake crying, you are fake crying. <laughs> just like, this is just so... Oh, this is so, this is just so like, oh, overreacting to the fact that a few people don't like your book. No, nobody's going to like every book. Like, what the fuck? Excuse me. What is. So that's what, that's what Heidi did then. So Dave's over here talking about how Heidi was so helpful in this whole process by not reading his book. Um, so here, all right, we're going to go to the continuation of it in the comments. We're not even at the live Instagram live stream mess yet. This is, there's just so much to unpack in this bullshit. Hope y'all have a drink and a snack and all that. Um, so Dave uh, says, coming into this release, my self-doubt told me that my success the first time out was only because of how I was able to draft off of Rachel's accomplishments, that our momentum in the marketplace at Hollis Company then with so much success in a daily morning show is what made a new New York Times bestseller. And that given I no longer was the beneficiary of her halo and considering the halo itself had been impacted over time, I began taking this thing that I was more proud of than any single thing I'd ever created and started downplaying its significance, underselling the benefits. When I heard I wouldn't go to New York for press, it was confirmation of this lie in my head. So I did what I've done. I spun dark, sad spin when I opened Amazon three days ago, desperately looking for a return on the 18 months of pain and growth. Okay. So he's just talking about how great this book is. I also want to talk about 
how he said Rachel's halo had been impacted over time. Is he like shit talking Rachel there being like, uh, and then Rachel said, what makes you think I want to be relatable? She cleans my toilets. And then uh, I think this whole thing is way worse than Rachel's toilet gate. I think this whole thing is way worse when we get through all of it. Um, so he says, uh, the vulnerability, the tears, I was not just checking on the reception of my next book, but also the reception of the most honest, authentic, and evolved version of me, a new and improved, but still a work in progress version of me, courageously stepping more deliberately into the space he believed he'd been called to. Instead, that morning, I looked where we tell people to never see, saw my greatest fear spoken by those who not only hadn't read the book, but who seems inter inter who's but who seems intended who seems intended injury with their words. And it worked. The new me felt seen but rejected. So I woke up floating on Wednesday morning only to come crashing back to earth, a parking lot, in fact, ready to go home, certain now that this tour was a waste of time. Couple things here. First of all, it is very important if you've been to, I said this about Gabby Hanna too, if you've been to like a single writing class workshop, if you've been to, when I, I mean, I got my master's in writing and publishing, so I've been to writing workshops. I spent my entire late teens and early 20s entirely in writing workshops. When you're in a writing workshop, it is nailed home to you how important it is to be able to separate yourself from your work. If someone has a criticism of your work, you cannot take that as an attack on you. And this is what's hard about people who are like influencers, people who are influencers going into the book writing world is in their mind, they are their brand. Dave is his own brand. Dave's brand is Dave. Dave's work and himself are so intertwined that when he puts a book out there and someone doesn't like it, he takes it as a personal attack. But it's not a personal attack. When you have a piece of work, some people are going to like it and some people are not. And you need to be able to separate the work, the criticisms of your work from criticisms of you as a person. So when he's talking about how this this book was it wasn't just the reception of the book it was the reception of the most honest authentic and evolved version of me no dave this isn't about people receiving you it's about how they don't like your book a lot of my criticisms of the book were about the writing were about how there were like sentences that didn't make sense about how the the overdone boat metaphor made the book tedious and confusing to read this, this is not me saying dave is a huge asshole and i hate him like i could say that too but that wouldn't be a book review if I'm reviewing the book, I'm talking about what I don't like in the book. And that's not being a hater. That's that's disliking someone's work. You need to learn to separate those things. Um, and then when he's talking about how it's haters who didn't even read his book. Dave, how do you, are you a mind reader? How do you know who's read your book and who hasn't read your book? I feel like, I don't know if he knows me, but I feel like I have to be the biggest hater he's thinking of because... My review of his previous book has like 90,000 views and my review of this book has 25,000-ish views. And so I think he probably thinks of me as a hater. However, I have read both books. Like I'm pointing to very specific sections in the book to show like it's very obvious I've read them. So I just don't know how he can say you're a hater and you haven't even read the book. How, how do you know that, Dave? Also, I want to thank Meg Summer for the super sticker. Thank you so much. I greatly appreciate that. You're wonderful. So Dave seems insistent on believing that the people that don't like his book haven't read it, despite having no proof of that whatsoever. So let's head into the second comment where he continues this rant. He says, then in an attempt to get straight, I read a passage from the book on a live from that parking lot alive that immediately preceded the start of this clip here. Also, Ellen, thank you for the super sticker. Much appreciated. Thanks so much. Um, a snippet I admitted I was reading as much to myself as to anyone needing to hear it that morning. My fear of what they would think was connected to how much impact I would have a byproduct of my dumb ego. I set out with an audacious ambition to change the world and contorted it into needing to touch millions of lives. But I hadn't considered that the world would change if it only touched one. I tried and failed to read it as if I believed it as much as the day I wrote it, discouraged that this teacher was still so much a student on this hard start to the day. Without missing a beat, Heidi shook me by the shoulders with her words. Okay. And then next screenshot. This is so fucking long. <laughs> um, okay. So, oh, I'm lost in these now. There's so many screenshots. Uh, 
let me see. Where am I even in these? There's nine parts to this. Darby, thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Oh, and then he, okay, so he's talking about this guy, Marcus. Um, so there's this guy, Marcus, who, there's this guy, Marcus, who says, he says, Dave, I came here today to make sure you know that the work you do matters. At the darkest times of my life, when next didn't make sense or feel like it mattered, you had something inspiring, witty, thoughtful, or funny to say, something I needed to keep going or get back up every time. You must know your work matters to so many. Um, oh, wait, thank you. so Candy, Soul, and Soil, thank you for the super sticker. And Laura, thank you so much for the super sticker as well. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Um, he says, uh, so then he's, he, Dave gets this positive feedback and goes, God, is that you? Of course, Marcus walked up on the day my confidence was shot when I found myself crying in the car about how ridiculous I was to think I could launch this book on my own. Questioning if I was good enough to do any of it. I had served the audience well enough to pull it off or was far enough into my journey to learn to connect and lead well. Thank you for the super sticker, Sasha. Thank you so much. All right. God damn, this is long. Now Dave's talking about lies from the... Dude, Dave, is Dave okay? So Dave's over here saying, he's talking about lies, lies from the devil, lies that were only made believable because of the power I afforded my fear, the license I'd given to my critic and self-doubt, stories that only became unbelievable when I connected to my truth to someone or someones that could set me straight. Truth for me really took root when I fully cult finally cultivated the courage to believe in myself and my abilities to honor the intention of a creator who gave me these gifts for a reason so I might gift them to others through my work. As Heidi said in the video, this is the best thing I've ever created, the closest I've ever come to honoring why I'm here. Nothing comes near it. Yes, it's overflowing with nautical analogies that make me want to poke a little fun of it at times, and I do, but they're freaking effective. It's like, okay, Dave, maybe to some people they're effective. They weren't effective for me. Like, you, there's nothing you can do to change that. Some, some people are going to find your metaphors effective and some aren't. Like, that's how books work, dude. It's okay. And I, I understand loving something and having it be your favorite thing you've ever created. That's like with my Forever Home Friends business. I feel very passionately about that. It's not one of my favorite. One of my favorite things, if not my favorite thing I've ever created. But when I see someone at an event and they say, you know, no, I'm not really a dog person. I'm not going to get the book that's okay. And I say, all right, have a good day and move on to someone who's interested. <laughs> like, it's just so weird that like, just because you're passionate about something, we, I, I even talk about this in Savvy Business Owner, which again, if you read the book and you don't like it, that's totally fine. But in a uh, Savvy Business Owner, I talk about how you as a, you as a creator of something are not your own target customer. You need to look at what your target customer wants. Not everyone is ever going to be your target customer. That's never going to be the case. You need to find your target customer and what they want. And you are not your own target customer. Someone, Some people who are like you or people who have similar interests to you may be your target customer, but it can't just be you. Because if you're only thinking about how proud you are of something you've created or how proud you are or how much this means to you and how much it changed your personal life, but you don't have in mind what it necessarily can do for other people, unless those people are carbon copies of you, then you haven't really created a product. You've just gone to therapy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, so let's continue with this. So he keeps just going on about how great his book is. He says, um, my reader, the one who connects with my message, they aren't usually looking for a doctoral thesis. They're looking for an effective set of tools to set them free, frameworks that make sense to allow for breakthroughs and stories they can relate to and occasionally laugh at. This book is that. It's effective, universally relatable, and poised to change the hearts, minds, and lives of those willing to read it. There's not a single person on this planet who can't take something good from this book, something simple and true, something that will fundamentally change their life forever. So, Let's say I can take something from this book. Does that mean it's worth the price I'm paying for it? In business, Dave Dave is a businessman. He he was the head of global distribution for Disney. He understands business. In business, you do a cost benefit analysis. So if I am going to invest uh, eighteen dollars into this book. Am I going to get $18 worth of something? Just because maybe I found one sentence that resonated with me in this book doesn't mean that the book was worth what I paid for it. It's a cost-benefit analysis. Um, Laura, thank you so much for the super sticker. I greatly appreciate that. Jen, thank you so much. Oh my God, you guys are so nice. Thank you guys so much for the super stickers. I appreciate that a whole lot. Um, so, but this is just like the the 
oh, it's going to change your life forever. I know it for a fact. Like, you don't know that. I guess this is changing my life in the sense that I can pay my mortgage on the ad revenue from the review video. That's about it. Like the book is, I've, I've read a lot of self-help books because I review a lot of them on my channel. And also because the reason I started doing this books and business niche on my channel is that I used to read just tons of books by successful business people to try to learn from them. And so much of it is the same stuff repeated over and over that tries so hard to be universally relatable that it ends up being empty. And I've talked about this. This is why, oh, I've got this one right here. A Dave I like a lot better, Dave Grohl. I reviewed Dave Grohl's book on my channel recently. And this book is not a self-help book. This book is not an effective set of tools and it is not universally relatable. I can't relate to being a rock star. I can't relate to being the drummer for Nirvana. I can't relate to waking up to find out that Kurt Cobain had just killed himself. I was two when that happened. So my point is like, this book is not universally relatable, but I figure like, I feel like I got a lot more out of it because I saw specifically what he did to find success. I saw he did, he sh did show, don't tell, right? He gave specific things of like, here is how I practice my drumming. Here is how I found this band and started going on tour with them. Here's what going on tour in a van was like. And it was very specific. I can't necessarily, I'm not a drummer. I'm not planning to become uh, a rock musician, but I still feel like I can learn a lot from that book because I saw the specifics of it. I've talked about how I'd much rather read a thousand books of different people who are successful telling me in excruciating detail exactly what they did rather than one or two books where people try to draw this this massive uh oversimplified thing so like dave hollis does have something valuable to share with the world he was a fucking disney executive he was the head of global distribution for disney that is an accomplishment that is that is a big role to have. He sold Marvel movies, Star Wars movies, Pixar movies. He sold tons of big movies to theaters and he got into that role. If Dave talked very specifically about what it was like getting his very first job out of college, how he networked to find those connections, to find those people, what he made his resume look like and how that might look different now than it did in the late 90s and early 2000s when he was doing that. What it looked like to, like he talks a little bit about what it looked like shifting careers, but it's more of this like trying to be universally applicable advice rather than telling me about the specifics of what he did. So I would much rather have specific business advice from Dave talking about what it was like negotiating in those meetings, what it was like to see those things like in the moment happening. I don't know how much of it maybe he just can't say because I bet Disney has massive NDAs. But anyway, my point is he has a lot of valuable information to give, but just focusing so much on this like, but you can do it, follow your dreams, don't give in to fear, untie the ship from the dock. It's universal, but it says nothing. So that's why I think this book wasn't worth it. Um, so are we even done with this fucking Instagram caption yet? Good Lord, Dave, how long are you going on for? Um, so anyway, this Instagram caption, we're, we've been at this for 45 minutes. I cannot keep going with this Instagram caption. I believe it's still up on this Instagram. Um, wait, let's go to part. Yeah. Let's go to the end of it where he continues. It's, it's, nine fucking comments on top of a uh, caption that maxes out the character limit. Whew, let's have some coffee. So Dave says, my commitment to you is to keep showing up daily for y'all. As it turns out, I don't have a choice. It's my purpose for being here. I'm going to start with 40 straight weekdays of a Built Through Courage book club, complete with roughly 50 page free workbook starting next Wednesday, November 3rd. We'll look at his book club recordings on Instagram as well. We are breaking this baby down chapter by chapter with an active learning and journaling prompts every single day to help you have the breakthroughs you're looking for. In exchange for my commitment to you and frankly, any value I may have ever offered while we've been friends here online over the years, I'm going to ask directly and in real time that you grab your copy of the book and then he links to the book right there. Um, so a couple of problems I have with this. We're going to talk about, about it in a minute. Dave goes on about how he's getting up every day, every weekday for 40 straight days to do this, this book club. I'm not, I don't want to be an asshole, but that's not that big of an accomplishment. I, I've done that. I have a morning show. I stream at 8 a.m. every morning and have, RK and I have streamed every morning at 8 a.m. Central for the past eight months. More than eight months now. We started mid-February and 
we have not missed a single episode. We've both traveled places. Uh, we've both got our COVID vaccines. RK literally fled a hurricane uh, in New Orleans and streamed from the car while driving away from the hurricane. Like we we did that. And we have book clubs on there too. But for our book clubs, we're not just reading books out loud to people and telling them what to think. We actually say to like on our morning show, what we do is we have like uh, generally most weeks, whoever we're following will have a book. And then we'll post on our subreddit and say, hey, this is the book we're going to read this week. Read it along with us. And then on Friday, when we do a review of the book, come on the stream on camera with us. And sometimes we'll, other people who have read the book will bring them on camera with us to out loud hear their opinions and talk to them about it. Because that's what a book club is. You're interacting with other people who have read the book and discussing your own interpretations and opinions out loud. That's what it is. It's not just someone on Instagram live yelling at you about what you should think. Um and then this whole thing about like, in exchange for my commitment to you, you need to buy my book. Guys, you're all here on my YouTube channel. I, I I promote my own books on my YouTube channel as I think it's normal to do because it's like, not all my videos are sponsored. So I'm like, oh, I sponsored this video myself by advertising my book in it. But none of you owe me buying my books. You can watch my videos for free and not buy my books. Of what I prefer you do? Yeah. I mean, if you like them, if you're interested, I only want people who are actually interested to get them though. If any of my books are something you're interested in, you can buy them. If not, then don't. <laughs> like this whole thing about like in exchange for this, in exchange for the fact that you follow me on Instagram, you owe this to me. That is not how this works, Dave. That is not how this works at all. Not at all. And to say like the time we've been friends here online, if you consider these people friends, then why are you just talking at them? Why aren't you being willing to listen to their feedback? Why isn't this conversation a two-way street? Um, uh, okay, let's let's see. Let's go to like the last last bit of this bullshit. Um, oh yes, we're finally almost done here. Uh, this is the last screenshot I have, but I don't believe it's the end because it ends in the middle of a sentence, but who cares? This this thing stuck, sucks. All right, so he says, I digress to say thank you. Thank you, each and every one of you, for the way you've played an incredible role in my life and my evolution in these last four years. Thank you for the DMs and comments of encouragement. So he's excited. He appreciates his community. And then this past Saturday, he decided to show us exactly how much he appreciated his community when he went live on his Instagram for two fucking hours. So we're going to take a look at this now. I would like to give a shout out to the person who recorded this and put it online. This is called Captain Dave's Live Shipwreck. Also, Dainty Bagley, thank you so much for the super chat saying, giving my money to you instead of Dave, you offer real value to me. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that. I appreciate that a lot. So this is called Captain Dave's Live Shipwreck. I want to give a shout out to Wet Biscuit McGlee, Wet Biscuit McGlee for uploading this onto Instagram, not uploading it from Instagram onto YouTube because Dave deleted this. Uh, he didn't delete it right away. He will go into his apology too, because he, he gave an apology. Um, actually, let me pull up uh, Instagram, Dave Hollis. We'll get him up hoping he hasn't blocked me yet. I don't think he has. Yep, he's not blocked me. We're good. Uh, so we have a lot of stuff we can look at on here. Uh, but first, we're going to react to Captain Dave's live shipwreck. Uh, we will be playing this at one and a half speed because it is two hours long. And I don't know if we'll get through the whole thing, but there's just like, there's a fuckload to unpack here. Like, there's a lot to unpack in this. So here we go. Working on a few things for uh, a little book of mine. It's the book launch week. Still working on it. It's called uh, Built Through Courage. More than that, uh, welcome to the patio of peace, where uh, game time temp is, I'm going to say it's about 55 degrees right now. I'm uh, wearing American flag socks, so you know everything's going to be just fine today. Thank you. We're on the patio of peace, and Dave's wearing his American flag socks. Um, I'm wearing fun, am I wearing fun socks? Oh, no, I'm just wearing some checkered socks. Yesterday I was wearing dinosaur socks, but not today. You, good morning. Uh, but I thought, I mean, why wouldn't we? You're on my patio of peace. I wrote a book where I describe the thing that I'm sitting on. Uh, if you're interested, I'm going to pull up a chair. I'm going to read out of the, uh, the book of Built for Courage, written by Mr. Dave Hollis. That's me. And uh, I'm going to read to you about my patio of peace. Now, 
I will warn you, if you go on the uh, Instagram feed for Mr. Dave Hollis. This still feels a little slow. Is that one and a half? I'm going to put it up to 1.75. And if it's too fast for you guys, please let me know in the chat and I'll slow it back down. But it seems he's talking pretty slow. So I think we'll be okay. Patio of Peace. I did something. Uh, it, it nearly feels obscene. I'm going to be honest. It nearly feels obscene. Dave uses the word obscene a lot. And I don't think he knows what obscene means. Obscene is like when you have something. Obscene is what happened when Heidi walked out of the shower on the live stream. None of this is obscene. Uh, I wrote... I wrote the longest caption I have ever written in my entire life. Straight up, I started writing. I got up, I got up early this morning. But here's the weird thing. I, uh, I'm i so excited about the book, and I'm in the window where I get to be really excited about the book that I rolled over. It was like 5.15 in the morning. I don't get up at 5.15 anymore. I am the only adult Hollis that lives here, and uh, that's, not, that's not my jam. But when I am in this launch window, and I am so excited... Pretty sure that was a dig at Rachel where he's like, uh, I don't get up at 5 a.m. Because remember, Rachel's, what makes you think I want to be relatable? Most people won't wake up at 5 a.m. like me, that thing. Dave's like, uh, so I'm the only one who lives here and uh, I don't wake up at 5 a.m. That's not my thing. I'm pretty sure that was a dig at Rachel. He is like, he is, uh, he is so big into like saying oh she's my co-parent i'm on team rachel i respect her but he does like these like very subtle passive aggressive digs at her they're all throughout this book too i did i showed in my review that i did last friday on this channel there's tons of passive aggressive digs at rachel in here where he's like i didn't want a divorce he's like i didn't ask her my divorce i didn't want my divorce i didn't put my dick anywhere near my divorce <laughs> okay sorry we'll continue about this stinking book i woke up and i was just like oh i gotta start working on i gotta start working on something because i'm so excited to tell people about it and i ended up writing this really long post where among other things i mean like you need like 40 minutes to read it so go ahead and pour yourself a tall coffee pull up a chair make sure there's a comfy cushion behind it he's not wrong we did spend about 40 minutes reading that caption but um it was just this declaration in like full transparency that i have written a book that you have to read i'm not shying away from it i'm not going to say you might like it i am 100 positive in my heart that there is something written in this book that will change your life there just is. And if that makes me uh, egotistical or if that makes me hubristic, label me that. I know that I have written something in this book. The words that... It's not about being egotistical. It's just about being wrong. There is no such book in existence that everybody is going to like or that everybody is going to benefit from. Everybody's lives and circumstances are so wildly different. So it's like, is he egotistical? Yeah, but he's also just wrong. That are used, they are written with love, and they were written specifically for you. I am positive, like beyond a shadow of doubt, more like certain of anything that I've ever been certain of that there is something that is inside of the book that is sitting currently on my lap that would change your life. It's 18 bucks, 18 stinking dollars. For 18 dollars, I am 100% certain I would put like all of the money in the world up against the promise that for 18 dollars I can change your life. And the reality is, most of the people that are watching right now are like, I'm good. I don't even know why you follow me. I'm gonna be honest. Sorry, it's early. Here's the thing. I have bought Dave's book and I don't follow him. So this is clearly not targeted at me. We're on my patio of peace. We're on my patio of peace. Dave, go to your peaceful place. Don't don't yell at these people. Don't yell at these people. I actually do follow Rachel though. As you guys know, I like Rachel better than Dave. I've been saying that since 2018. Since the very, I very first started reviewing any of their books. I've always I've always liked Rachel better. So it's a little bias on my part, I guess. I have plenty of criticisms for Rachel, as you guys know. The plagiarism, the body shaming, the MLM speeches. None of that's okay, but Dave's worse. Well, they're friends. We're trying to be friendly. Don't yell at these people. I'm just going to say, I'm coming back. I'm going to be a little, a little intense for a second. I just want you to brace yourself. It's early. I'm wearing American flag socks. You know it's going to be a good day if you're wearing those American flag socks. Why do you follow me if you haven't bought my book? Why do you... Oh, hey, my mom's here. What's up, mom? I just want to say hi to my mom. Mom, wondering if he's offering a money-back guarantee. I mean, I hope so, considering... Uh, I don't know. Probably not. He wants my, he's going to say it over and over again. He wants my 18 U.S. American dollars. It's just 18. He doesn't, he doesn't swear. He says 18 freaking dollars, 18 stinking dollars. It's just 18 U.S. American dollars. You follow me. If you follow me and haven't bought my book, unfollow me. I would prefer to lose all of the people who are not. In I did buy his book and I never followed him in the first place. So. Clearly not me. Interested in buying the thing that I have dedicated the last 18 months of my life to, that I have poured every single bit of my being into, then allow you to show up and breach our contract. Because this is our contract. This is it. Okay, the breach our contract thing is so fucking weird. Okay, I want to I want to point out, someone on Reddit pointed out, I saw someone on Reddit, and if you're the person on Reddit who posted this and you want credit, let me know. I don't always, like, people on Reddit sometimes like to stay anonymous, so I don't always uh, shout them out. But... Uh, this person on Reddit pointed out 
that Dave is acting a little bit like a, I don't know if incel would be the right word, a little bit like a quote unquote nice guy acting like one of those dudes who's like, but this is our contract. This is our contract. I did all this for you and you won't even do this for me. Right. You know, like all those guys who are like to, to, they make friends with a woman and then they're like, but I spent time being nice to you and you don't want to have sex. What? That that's not exactly what he's doing, but someone was talking on Reddit about how it had the same kind of vibe, how they felt the same way when he yelled this at them and said like, I let you follow me. I, I post pictures on Instagram. This is our contract. You're supposed to buy things from me when I let you follow me. Like, it has the same kind of vibe. It has, it has the nice guy vibes. Not, not nice guy, for those who don't know, this is nice guy in a sarcastic way. Not actually nice. You know what I'm saying? A guy who thinks he's a nice guy, but is actually being manipulative. I will show up every single day for y'all. We're starting a book club on Wednesday. Wednesday, the we'll third day the of no November, third of November, right? We're going to start a book club and I'm going to get up every single day and I am going to hand you a 50 plus page PDF workbook for free. And I'm going to give you the journaling prompts and I'm going to give you the work prompts that are going to take you through every single one of these chapters. And some of you are just going to join the lives. That's cheating. That is cheating. Well, good to know. I am not cheating because I have watched, I watched his first live. We reacted to it on your morning guru. Uh, you can watch that if you want. It might be a little hard to watch because it was live on Instagram and we're reacting to it live while he's live. So that means it's, we're all talking over each other. So it's not that easy to listen to, but we did react to it live and I did buy the book. So I wasn't cheating. I didn't cheat. Dave say a lot of things about me, but I'm not a cheater. I've written a book for you. It is 18 American dollars. It is 18 American dollars. $18. And I'm just telling you right now, 100%. It'll change your life. It will change your life. Will it really change my life, Dave? Yes. It will change your life. I wrote this book. It's called Built Your Courage. It's $18. We're gonna start a book club on Wednesday. So a lot of the things on here, I just want to give some context because it might look like Dave is a little more, he might come off a little more unhinged than he really is because this is a recording of an Instagram live. So a lot of the things, it sounds like he's just talking out of nowhere being like, it'll change your life. Will it really change my life, Dave? Yes, it'll change your life. Like that stuff looks a little weird. I think he's responding to a chat. So this is a recording of it on YouTube, like a screen recording. You don't see the chat in here, but it was on Instagram live. There was a live chat in there that was talking back to him. So that's where some of this stuff comes from. He's not just like pulling this out of nowhere. You're all invited, but you know who I only want to show up? People that invested themselves $18 worth, $18 worth, because I am 100% certain I'm gonna wake somebody up in the Hollis house. It's so quiet here. Please, Dave, don't yell. $18. Let's get back to peace for a second. $18. I'm just letting you know. He does. He's, you're about to see, he wakes up his four-year-old daughter with all his yelling outside. We'll, we'll get into that. That. I don't mind because it's my calling. This is my life. Like, Dave, are you really going to show up every day for 40 consecutive days and teach us for nearly an hour's worth of time, give us a free PDF workbook for just kicks? No, it's not kicks. I'm going to do it because this is my calling. I don't have a choice. I was brought here and I'm not leaving. So I'm going to serve you all well. I'm going to serve you guys well. I'm a little ornery this morning. I'm going to be honest. I may have gotten up a little earlier than I let on because I've been... So Dave's over here like, I actually, I said I got up at 5.15, but I actually got up earlier than that. I'm wondering, this is speculation and I don't normally like to speculate. So if I'm, I'm not saying this is true. I'm just saying when I watched this, I wondered if perhaps Dave had maybe been using a substance of some sort because he's talking about how he got up early. He didn't sleep. He's about to talk about how his mouth's really dry. He's like, my mouth's dry and I got up early and I'm, I'm like, I'm wondering if perhaps he was, he was taking a substance. I, I don't know for sure. So I'm not saying, I'm just saying that like, it, it comes across that way to the viewer a little bit. Thinking about all the things I want to do with this book. I want this book to be in the hands of every single human being I meet. I may in fact, I've gotten up just a tiny bit early. My mouth is just a tiny bit dry right now. So you might be hearing my tongue sticking to the roof of my mouth. It's because I'm fired up. Why are you fired up, Dave? It's Saturday morning. You're wearing American flag socks. We know that American flag socks make you happy. And you're on your patio of peace. I thought that your patio of peace is where you conjured peace. Is it on Audible? Darn right, it's on Audible. I read it and I read it in a tone that is far calmer than the one that I'm trying to encourage you to buy right now. Dave, you're talking about peace, aren't you? No, I'm talking about buying my book because we got a book club starting on Wednesday. You got like four yeah, days Dave, to make a transaction. About, Dave, are you talking about peace? You're on your patio of peace. Are you talking about peace? No, dude, I'm talking about buying my book. That is not how you sell a book. You've got to show your audience some respect. Show your, your potential customers some respect, Dave. God damn it. Why do you follow me if you don't already own my book? Hold on. We got to listen to that again. This, I'm going to put that at, at, at uh, I'm going to put that at slower than normal speed. Hold on. We're going to go back. It's not kicks. Wait, sorry. I went too far back. American flag socks make you happy. 
All right, slow drunk Dave over here. Here we go. Starting on Wednesday, you got like four days to make a transaction. Why do you follow me if you, you don't, don't already own my book? book. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that little song he was singing. <laughs> When we watched this happen live on Saturday, Arcade, I were walking around New Orleans, going to restaurants and bars and everywhere. We're just walking around New Orleans last week, just going, why do you follow me if you don't already Oh my book? We're just like singing it all around town. And I feel bad. I just want to issue a quick apology because... After this came out, we were just so obsessed with that little song Dave was singing right there that we went on Your Morning Guru on the live stream channel the next day. And we decided, we're like, guys, we're going to do a Dave Hollis parody. We tried to make it as clear as possible that it was a Dave Hollis parody. And we were like, we have 2,000 subscribers on this channel, but we didn't sell 2,000 copies of Cancel Sean Boston. Why do you guys even follow us if you don't have our book? Like, it was meant to, and then we were like, guys, don't take it seriously. It's a Dave Hollis parody. But still, like, some people bought our book after that. And I just want to make it clear that if you're not actually interested in the book and you felt pressured to buy it, please, please return it. Please get your money back. I do not want I do not want to make anyone feel manipulated, but we thought it would be a funny little a funny little parody to do. Uh anyway, let's continue. Uh I'll put this back on faster speed. Why do you follow me if you don't already own my book? Okay, I need someone who does remixes to take that and to take Rachel going, what makes you think I want to be relatable and somehow make a little song out of it? I just, I want to see a song. I need a remix. So uh, I just want to encourage you uh, for $18, for $18, here's the thing. I will, for somebody who today buys the book, I'm going to take off my American flag socks. I'm going to sign them. I'm going to write my name on them in an autograph fashion. And I'm going to mail them to you as a prize for deciding to finally make a good choice in the month of October. Okay. I waited till the end so of I feel a little bad about this. I feel, I feel bad about this and I, I, I might need to apologize because this is, I'm being pretty hypocritical here in what I did. But Dave said, I I bought the book and Dave said, if you bought the book, you could win the American flag socks. He's going to take them off his feet and sign his socks for his foot fetishists in the audience and send the socks to you. Um, so maybe, did my comment get deleted? No, no. Maybe on Your Morning Guru, we might have possibly commented on Dave's instagram post to say we bought the book how can we win the american flag socks <laughs> we um oh it all we got is emojis laughing so i know i'm always saying like reviewers never tag authors in your negative reviews which i haven't done i have not tagged dave once in anything because i don't believe that reviewers should tag authors in negative reviews i don't believe they should do that just as i don't believe that um that authors should come after reviewers. I think there should be separation in that. But like he said, he was going to send someone the socks. I kind of want to make the socks. I don't know what I would even do with them. It would just be, you just put them on Sean Boston, the puppet, maybe. <laughs> like, so I feel kind of bad. I'm like, did I, did I kind of breach book reviewer ethics here? I might have. And if someone thinks I did, please let me know. And like, I'll make amends or delete the comment or whatever. But like, I want the socks. I paid for the book and I deserve my socks, Dave. I want my socks. Um, I don't know if he ever actually sent out the socks. Anyway, let's continue. The month, I'll be honest. But why do you follow me if you don't have the book? If you follow me and you don't have the book, we need to have a longer conversation. Like seriously, I'm all about getting a free ride. Just not here. Just not here. I didn't write this because I thought it'd be fun to have some illustrations in a book with a bunch of pages on it. No, I wrote it because it was placed in my heart. I wrote it with... Okay, Dave described a book there. He's like, I didn't write this book because I thought it'd be fun to have some pages bound together with stuff on that. Like, Dave, that's a book. You just described a book. <laughs> with tears dripping down my face. I wrote it because we've all been through a hard time. And I know I am positive. Dave, are you positive? Like 100% positive? I'm 100% positive. Frankly, if you buy the book, you read the entire book and you tell me legitimately, Dave, I didn't get one thing out of this book. I will actually do something obscene for you. I will. Like, I give you a thousand dollars. I don't want to say it because then someone's yeah, he's like, I don't want to like, say it because then someone's going to actually hold me to it. Um, 
And that's the thing. I guess I can't say I didn't get anything out of the book because I did get ad revenue for reviewing it on YouTube. So that's probably a loophole that Dave's going to catch me on that I won't win the thousand dollars. I read it and I won a thousand dollars. No, but like, I feel so confident about this that I would bet something irrationally huge because I am so, you can go ahead and raise your middle finger at me. I don't even care about you middle finger guy today. You know why? Because it doesn't bother me today. So Dave here is mad because somebody in his live chat on Instagram sent him a middle finger emoji and he's yelling at them. Generally, when you get haters in the comments, you're either supposed to like, I either take their comments in good faith and try to have a good conversation, or if they're being super rude, someone can just block them. That's what's up. I wrote this book. And you know who needs this book most? Middle finger guy in the comments. You, son, need this book. You, son. Whatever's happening with you son. in your life. I love you. I wrote this. There's, there he is. You, sir, you need the book. Now you're blocked forever. Like literally forever. You're gone. I was going to teach you something this morning. And now, middle finger guy, you're gone. You know what you need? You need this book. 18 bucks. 18 bucks. That guy's whole life could change. I will say I have tried when people are rude to me in the comments, I have tried to hard sell a book as a response. So I kind of get what he's doing here. Like, for example, <laughs> back when I first wrote Sculpt Yourself, so my book Sculpt Yourself is on the shelf back there. And that is an LGBT romantic sci-fi about body image. Um, and when I was leading up to the review or to the release of that book, I was, I posted a picture of myself where you can see my body hair very clearly. And I was talking about having a positive body image and I got the armpit hair fetishists. I didn't know that armpit hair fetishists were a thing, but they found me on Instagram and started leaving these comments with all these like tongue licking emojis being like, oh my God, I want to lick your armpit hair. It was really gross. Um, and so I replied and instead of blocking them, I was like, if you like women with body hair, then you're really going to love this book, Sculpt Yourself. It's link in bio. Go check it out. It's all about women who have positive body image. <laughs> and, um, I don't know if that led to any sales, um, but I also put up a video where I talked about uh, my boobs. That was the Having Huge Boobs Sucks video that I put up. And that one, I talked all about how, you know, body image and body proportions play into this book. And I'd get comments from men being like, I couldn't stop staring at your boobs during this video. And I'd be like, great, then you're going to love sculpt yourself. <laughs> so I kind of get it. I've done the thing where when you get weird comments, you hard sell to them in return because I think that's funny as hell. <laughs> but uh, uh, so I, you know what, Dave, I'll give you credit where it's due. That's fucking funny. I like that. If you haven't bought the book yet, I want you in the comments to tell me why you follow me, but have not yet spent $18 on the thing that I spent eight. Oh, here we go. This, this is, this is upsetting what happens here. Writing through tears. I, I just, I want to know because if you can come up with a good reason, I will accept it. I will okay. Here's the thing, Dave, just because you cried while you wrote the book does not mean that someone else needs the book. Like I can go to therapy and cry. That doesn't mean someone needs a video of my therapy session. Like, what are you, this is like, you are not your target customer, Dave, your target customer is your target customer will now create an exception to my rule. And my rule is, I will show up for you every single day. Then his audio cuts out a little bit. He'll be back in a second. This is just, it cut out on consider. Instagram too. Spend 18 bucks. And here's the thing, someone who's listening right now is like, I'm trying to enjoy my coffee and this guy's trying to get 18 bucks out of me. If that request offends you, I understand. And I mean no disrespect. But I'm also going to ask you to unfollow me. Because I bled into this. I wrote these words for you. I didn't write them for me. I mean, here's the thing. I'll be I bled into this. Then he says, I wrote these words for you. I didn't write them for me. So which is it, Dave? Do you feel offended that this thing that you cried and bled into for 18 months isn't getting reception, which would mean you wrote it for you? Or did you write it for other people and think that they genuinely need it? In which case, if you think that they genuinely need this book, you wouldn't be shouting at them to buy it and you wouldn't be trying to emotionally manipulate them into it. If you think that they actually need this book, you would be talking about its positive features and talking about what it can do for them. And Dave, you know how to sell. You were the head of global distribution for fucking Disney. You were a salesperson at the top level for years. You know how to sell things. Why are you being like this? To be honest, I did run for me. All right, here's the thing. Sleeve says, I don't have a job. I don't have any money. I am not trying. To okay. So Dave said, why are you following me, but don't own this book? Tell me in the comments. So I know. So someone comments on his Instagram live and says to him, I don't have a job right now. I have no money because I don't have a job. 
Okay, Dave, what is your response to that? Because my response, if someone said, I've had people say to me things like, I've gotten DMs before where people are like, hey, Savvy, I really want to buy your books, but I don't, I got laid off or I don't have a job. And I'm like, dude, do not worry about it. I'm just happy that you're here. I'm just happy that like you left me a nice comment. Like for real, do not feel pressured to like, so what does Dave say? What does Dave say? Do we think that Dave says, you know what? That's, a, that's okay. You don't have a job. And I, I wish you the best in finding a new job. And I no, no, that's of course not what Dave does. Trying to be dismissive of your situation with work, sir or ma'am. And I mean this serious. And I mean, serious is a heart attack. This $18 would be the fastest route to you getting paid, the fastest route to you finding your passion and your calling. The okay. So Dave says, uh, this $18, if you spend this $18 on this book, It'll help you find a new job. This is going to be the fastest route to you finding a new job. Uh, you know what? I read the whole fucking book. I read the whole entire book. There is no advice on getting jobs in this book. None. None whatsoever. There's no advice on how to interview for a job. There's no advice on how to look for a new job. So Dave says this book is going to be the fastest route to getting yourself a new job. Well, I, I read the book and it wasn't in there. There was no advice. I did, there's advice for like how to sit down and reflect on your calling and like how to figure out what your true passions are and what your goals are and set goals and what you want to do in your life. But if in this moment you need a job, you don't necessarily have time. You might want to find something that's going to help you get a job and then you can work on that. We talk about the hierarchy of needs, right? Your hierarchy of needs, food, water, and shelter, that's the main thing. Most of the time, you're going to need a job. If you're going to pay for those things, you got to get the basic needs met, and then you can start thinking about, how do I want to set goals and think about the future? This person's worried about the present, where this book focuses on the future. It's not going to work for them. They are not your target audience, Dave. Fast, fastest route to you getting money, having abundance in your life, of any of the things you're considering right now. I don't know what options you're working through, but if I were you, I am dead serious here. I know it's early. I haven't slept a lot. I've been thinking about this book, but I am dead serious. If I had no money, I had literally no money, I had no job, I would find a way to get $18 to get this book. God, Dave, that sounds like you're being disrespectful. Yeah, okay. You know what? This is what MLM recruiters do. This is what MLM recruiters do. They say, oh, you don't have you don't have $99 to get the starter kit to join It Works. You don't have $99. Well, and, and you have no job and you have, you're a single parent who has kids to feed. Hmm, what should you do? Should you maybe, uh, I don't know. Anyway. Should you waste all your money in this MLM? Oh, you don't even have $99 to spend on the starter kit? Well, then maybe you should go uh, flip some items you found in the $1 section at Target. Maybe you should have a little garage sale and sell all your stuff. Maybe you should do this and just find a way, find any way possible to get that $99 to invest in yourself, to invest in the future so that then they can siphon all this money out of you. That is exactly what MLM recruiters do is what Dave is saying right here. People that don't have jobs. No. I'm saying that I think some of the answers as to why you don't have a job or how you find one when you don't currently have one might exist here because I spend a bunch of time talking about It's about, he said they might exist here. So he wants someone who doesn't have any disposable income right now because they are unemployed to spend $18 on a book that might help them find a job without any guarantee of return. Cost benefit analysis, Dave, you're a businessman, you should know this. Finding your purpose on this planet, unlocking the intention of your creator. I just believe in the depths of my soul that some of the answers might be here. I'm sorry that you don't he believes that the answers might be there. He knows he knows not to say that they definitely are there. I have a job. There are resources though that exist, and I'm gonna tell you right now, this is a freaking resource. It's a resource. It, sure. I mean, I, I guess I could see like I, again, I'll give him credit where it's due. There are some journaling prompts in this book that have things about uh, how to prioritize different things in your life, how to set goals. Uh, how to look at a difficult situation you're in and reflect on it. like And doing that type of self-reflection and journaling is very helpful. And he's right about that. But if you need a job in this moment, you do not need, you do not need this particular book. You do not need to spend $18 with Dave. <sighs> 18 bucks. It's cheaper than taking a cab to go down and talk to somebody about how you can find a job. I am Dave, does Dave think... Is Dave under the impression that someone who doesn't have $18 is taking a cab to go meet with a job recruiter? Dave, I don't know if you know this, but poor people take the bus, Dave. They take the fucking bus. People who don't have money aren't spending it on cabs. Dave, there's this little thing called public transit that people take when they don't have... I take public transit. I take public transit and now I have... Uh, I, I'm employed. I mean, I'm self-employed, but I do make money so I can afford to have a cab every once in a while when I need one. But if you are unemployed and you don't have $18, you're not going to spend that on a cab. You're going to use public transit. Jesus, Dave. Oh my God. I'm fired up, Bill. Billy, fired up. What's my name, Jonathan? My name is Dave. 
I'm wearing American flags, socks, we've covered that already. I'm sitting on the patio of peace, getting some thumbs downs. I'm gonna tell you right now, you sir are no longer a friend of mine. I'm gonna miss you. I wish that we could be friends forever. Okay, uh, all right, so people are gonna go buy it and I appreciate that. Thank you. Audio ver Audible version is completely acceptable. I'm the one who reads the book and I 100% absolutely love listening to audiobooks, especially when the author has read it. You can hear all of the emotion in my voice while I'm reading a book that is super emotional. So I'm in. Um, yeah, there you go. You can get the book from the library too. I like, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to try and shame you into having to buy a book, but also uh, there is an option in the library. I also think it's a great deal. And I think you should get it. It would help you period. Uh, all right. I'm so Dave's all like, no, you, okay. You can get it from the library. I won't shame you for getting it from the library, but also you should buy it. Dave, if people check out the book from the library or you know what is a great way to support authors and people have done this with my books when they've said, you know what, I don't have the money to buy your book, but I actually really want to read it. So what they've done is, and I've gotten messages about this. I love when people do this. They go into the library and they say, hey, there's this book I really want to read, but you guys don't have it. Then the library will put in an order to the book's distributor to get a copy of that book for the library. I, as the author, will still get paid for that. The person who wants to read the book doesn't pay for it because it's now in the library and now anyone can read it for free. So if you ever want to, if there's ever a book you really want to read, but maybe it's by a smaller author or it's by an author who's not listed in the library or something, you can always put in a request at your library. And a lot of libraries will go ahead and order that book for people who put in requests because they know that those people would like to read those books. So you can always request something at your library and that's a great way to do it too. And as the author, you should not be berating people for that. I'm going to go into a uh, less hostile version of myself and my voice. Good morning. Again, you are sitting on my patio of peace. Welcome. I am so happy that you are here. I am <laughs> not sure what's happening. There's a lot of negative comments. I know. You know what it is? I started talking about this book. And they were like, no, don't talk about this book. Just show us something else. I'm not sure where all these, uh, where all these comments are from or who they are. I've never Dave keeps going on about how he's on the patio of peace. And this is the least peaceful he's ever been. This is a not a peaceful man right now. I've never been like, uh, in close DM contact with a lot of these people. I know. I need sleep. I do. Thank you for identifying that, Shoppy. Appreciate that. All right. We're going to read a little section out of the book where I talk about the importance of stillness. Uh, I am sitting here on this back patio where I have conjured stillness for myself over and over and over again. It has been so, so important to being able to connect with the voice that is inside of my being, but also the- So he's talking now, he's reading a section from his book about stillness. As we can tell, stillness God, is the, something the, Dave's the doing great at right now. When something other than that tries to infiltrate my peace. So I'm going to uh, read you a little bit about why I believe peace and stillness is an important thing for you to consider making an intention on a very, very regular basis. All right, hold on, I'm trying to find it. So now he's finding his section about stillness nice in the book, and he's gonna he's gonna is, read bits of oh, the Tamara. book. Tamara um, was late, everybody. I'm sorry. We're gonna have to just do this real quick for Tamara. Tamara, I'm so sorry that you were late. Oh, late. okay. Uh, and then someone in the chat shows up, and and her name is Tamara, and he's like, Tamara, you're late. I'm so sorry. Well, let's uh, recap everything everyone, I'm we sorry just that I'm went over myself. because one person was late to the live, despite the fact that you can just rewind it, not on Instagram Live, but after it's posted. Anyway. Uh, so then Dave's showing his book. He specifically says in the book, you can't sail the sea on someone else's map, which is false because sailors are not generally cartographers. You generally do use other people's maps when you sail the seas. You generally use other people's maps when you travel anywhere because we're not all charting new territory out here uh, unless... Someone, someone in the chat said, like, built through colonization. Like, that's kind of what it seems like when he's like, chart new territories, build your own maps. Uh, historically, that's been a way that people's land has been colonized, but okay. Uh, and so this, anyway, this is the map of Dave's book that he wants you to follow, even though he explicitly says in the book not to use someone else's map to follow, to sail the seas. So the metaphors are not consistent. Um... So uh, he keeps talking for a while. He reads from his book, which is boring as fuck. And then we're going to wait till his daughter Noah comes out for pancakes. There are various ways of doing this. Some of us choose meditation, some a hot bath, others time in nature or the solitude that comes in a long run. In late, in late 2019, to find the next level stillness I needed to manufacture my ambitious best year ever, I traveled to a place in the desert outside of Tucson, Arizona, where for three days I sat on a rock alone. Open notebook, no technology, no agenda. Well, okay, there was a small agenda. I was on a mission to find my- So he's talking about how you went to Arizona to try to find peace. Oh, and then his daughter's gonna show up in a second. Had been so consumed by the identities of husband and father that I no longer knew who I was. A special blend. Oh, good morning. So there's his four-year-old daughter, Noah. She shows up out here being like, hey dad. 
hey dad i'm hungry so remember earlier when dave was like it's five in the morning and i'm yelling out here i'm gonna wake up someone in this household well guess what he woke up this little four-year-old girl who's now hungry because she's been awoken early in the morning I saw the sun come up. Yep, the sun's up, so you can get out of bed now. But you're on my patio of peace, which means we're going to try and be a little bit quiet while I finish reading, and then we're going to go and make breakfast. I, lo I love that, the audacity of, like, we're on the patio of peace, so you, four-year-old child, need to be quiet, despite the fact that you are talking in a very soft tone, and I, Dave, am screaming at the audience. I want Mickey pancakes. Let's do some Mickey pancakes today. Yay. So he's promised his daughter that he's going to make her Mickey Mouse pancakes. Um, what happens, um, basically, as Dave has confirmed in the in the the comments uh he his family has breakfast at 9 30 in the morning on saturdays so it's too early for her to be up it's still at least an hour so this is this is like uh 30 minutes into it so it's probably i don't know 7 or 8 a.m at this point so it's not time for her to be able to eat breakfast yet and I understand with Dave saying that just because your kid is hungry doesn't mean you can feed them right away all the time, doesn't mean you're going to stop what you're doing and make breakfast. However, Dave is failing to recognize, first of all, that his yelling is probably what woke her up in the first place because he even said at the beginning, I'm going to wake up someone in this household. I'm going to wake up someone here. So he's, he's yelling at, at everywhere and his daughter wakes up and is now hungry. So if your four-year-old wakes up and is really hungry and they want some pancakes, Obviously, you don't drop everything you're doing to make them pancakes the second they demand it. You don't want to teach kids that they can just tell you what to do and be uh, demanding all the time. That's not good. That's not good for the kid either. So I get what he's doing. But at the same time, if your kid is really hungry, as she's going to keep coming back out and telling him, then perhaps uh, you might want to say, oh, okay, well, you know what? You can go get an apple out of the fridge. You can go get a little snack. Uh, guys on Instagram, hold on. I'm going to get my child a little snack so that she has something to eat to keep her occupied while she's waiting. Also, also, as we're going to see here, Dave, we've talked about this before. Dave makes so much content out of his daughter, Noah, and it's disgusting. I, I've said before, I don't like parents using their kids for content. He has a book coming out in February about his daughter, Noah, about the two of them going on adventures to sail the seas and be ship captains together. I'm, I wish I could be making this up. Like, I'm not making this up. He has a little show on his Instagram Live and his YouTube channel called Tea Time with Noah, where he and Noah have tea parties and discuss things that are beyond her level of comprehension as a four-year-old, like setting big goals for the future and like manifesting things, like things that a four-year-old absolutely does not have any interest in. Uh, and people watch it because they're like, oh, she's so cute. She's adorable. She's a really cute kid. But Dave's using his kid for content. I don't like that he does that. He has now written a book about her that he is putting out there. We talked about in the previous video that I did on this channel a week ago about how so Noah is adopted and she is mixed race and I believe is half black. But Dave made Dave let the artist make Noah whiter looking than Dave is on the cover of the book. Uh, and th this whole book is coming, like, this reminded me of Amazing Amy from Gone Girl. Like, it is fucking weird to use your kids for content like this. My whole point with all of this is that Noah's coming out here in the morning being like, hey, dad, I need some food and some attention because I'm a small child. And Dave is like, Dave, basically, when people were criticizing him for the way he's going to be treating her in this, they were like, Dave was like, oh, well, she, this is my office. This is what I'm working. This is my job. She can't just come disrupt my job. And it's like, Dave, this child is four years old. And you put a phone in her face all the time. You constantly record the two of you together and use her for content. And you're always recording her and putting her on the internet. How is a four-year-old supposed to know the difference when you have your phone out and are recording and you want her to be performing for the camera versus you have your phone out and you're recording and you want her to go away. How how could she possibly know that difference? She's four years old. You're, it's not like you're, you're, oh my God. Anyway, let's continue. A special blend of people pleasing, codependence, and so desire to be loved had me familiar with acquiescing to the needs and interests of my closest people so much that I was unable to answer a simple question. What do you like to do in your spare time? I spent so much time trying to be and often failing completely to be who my partner and kids or parents, my church or society wanted me to be, but I lost sight of who I, of, of who they wanted me to be, but I lost sight of who I wanted to be. Who was I meant to be? Couldn't even tell you what I liked. I lost touch with my true desires. I lost touch with my passions. Anyone else relate? When I ventured into the desert, I'd recently finished reading a book by Ryan. 
So just like, first of all, can we just take in how, so his, his daughter's sitting off to the side, like waiting for him to pay attention to her. And he's reading out loud the most boring book ever. Listen to how boring this is. And holiday called Stillness is the Key. I challenged myself to see what popped up when I did as his book recommended and made stillness an intention. Uh, if you're just joining us, uh, public service announcement, I'm reading a, a book that I highly recommend. There's I wrote this dog. and I wrote it for cute. you. It's called Built Through Courage. It is $18 uh, in the United States of America, and it's available today wherever books are sold. Uh, I'm going to start a book club on Wednesday, and I would love for you to join us. Uh, it is 18 U.S. American dollars. It is 18 freaking U.S. American dollars. Uh, I'll exchange 40 days of labor for a single $18 purchase of this book. In exchange, uh, sorry, in testing this hypothesis that any season of chaos across the crisis you find yourself in can be better navigated by slowing down and tuning out the noise, it turned out to be a powerful experience and one that I can't recommend enough. Hey, Noah, I need my computer. Okay. So his four-year-old, he's asking her to go get his computer for him. He's like, four-year-old, why are you awake? I can't make you breakfast right now, but you can go help me. You can go work for me. I'm working. You're not supposed to bother me, but get me my computer. I can't go get it myself. So he's making his four-year-old go get him his computer. About to lose battery here, folks. Hang out. Hold on. So I sat there in the desert and scribbled my thoughts in a small green notebook with a ship scrawled on its front. My first entry read, well, I'm writing in a notebook. How exciting. Well, it said I'm writing in a journal. I wasn't looking. I'm writing in a journal. <laughs> How exciting. Then I God, this book is so boring. I want to die. Drew a straight-faced emoji. The notion of being alone, of giving myself permission to take time away from my family and work, it felt strange. All right, pause. I got to get the computer so that we don't have his phone die on us. Hold. Please. Intermission time. No so if he's going to say it. hold, please, why didn't he just go get his own computer and not make his four-year-old do it? Thank you. Oh, where's the plug on the side? I unplugged it. I'm going to need that plug. I need that white plug. The, the small white plug that we had. I'm going to need that. No, 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 not that one. Uh, yep, that one. Uh, yeah, just this one. Thank you so much. Let's close that door. It's chilly. Yeah. All right, hold, please. We're coming back. Coming back. I know everyone likes to have plug time, but uh, you can't have this uh, phone die or there's no more reading time with Uncle Dave. You know, I think uh, I think Mac from Mac Attack pointed this out. It was funny. I think it was him who pointed it out because he did a reaction to this too. Highly recommend everyone check out Mac Attack if you haven't already. He's so funny. Um, but Dave talks about the importance of having unplugged time, like getting away from your technology, being unplugged from things. Literally, all he did was literally unplug the computer charger and he called that unplugged time. He's like, it's important to have unplugged time. So I unplugged the computer charger, but then Noah, my four-year-old, didn't plug it back in for me. What a weird dude. Uncle Dave, who has stopped sleeping. Well, the book is coming out. Good morning, everybody. What is sleep anyway, really? Uh, okay, back to our book. Uh, if you're just joining us, it's not just me talking to my phone. Uh, we're reading a book. It's called Built Through Courage. Uh, I would encourage you to grab it. It's available today. And uh, I am uh, reading currently out of a chapter inside of the section on your calling that is all about creating stillness. Stillness. In testing his hypothesis that any season of chaos or crisis you find yourself in can be better navigated by slowing down and turning down the noise, it turned out to be a powerful experience and one that I can't recommend enough. So I sat... So Dave talks about, he's talking here about how he went to the desert and sat on a rock and wrote in a journal and had an experience of figuring out what his purpose in life was. I don't know what Dave's purpose in life is. Dave in this book is talking constantly about like, I was running Rachel's company, but that was Rachel's dream. It wasn't my dream. I was working at Disney, but that was society's dream. That wasn't my dream. I had to find my true purpose and calling, which I still don't know what it is. He's never made it clear what other than like writing is writing shitty books for people is calling. I don't understand there in the desert and i scribbled my thoughts in a small green notebook with a ship scrawled on its front my first entry read well i'm writing in a journal then i drew a straight faced emoji the notion of being alone of giving myself permission to take time away from my family and work felt strange the idea of doing this without a detailed agenda felt stranger by filling up a notebook with things i didn't even know i was thinking i was able to have the breakthroughs that were needed to create the kind of life i wanted in the coming year so uh, outside of this book being boring, I'll briefly give him credit where it's due. The The act of free writing is incredibly helpful to get your mind going. I've talked about this a lot on my channel when I've given writing advice, which is that whenever you're stuck on something, I, I do this with writing, but you can do it with any problem you're trying to solve. You know, set yourself a little timer. And I've done this with my students when I've taught creative writing to students before. Um, you set a timer for five to 10 minutes, just set a timer on your phone, sit down with your notebook or with your laptop or whatever, and you're not allowed to stop writing. Doesn't matter if you spell everything wrong, doesn't matter if you forget to punctuate everything, doesn't matter if it's sentences that make no sense, no one needs to see it but you. The point is that you're, get, you're practicing the skill of putting your thoughts in your head into words on paper. And while you're practicing that, it gets your mind actively thinking about other connections that you can make between things. And it is super helpful for figuring something out. So the act of free writing and journaling and forcing yourself to, to try those things 
or in doing so with a prompt can can be very helpful. And I've done this with my students a lot and it has helped them come up with lots of ideas for their stories. So what he's saying here is not bad advice. It's absolutely good advice what he's saying. He wrote it in the most boring way possible and is reading it instead of paying attention to his kids. This has been a thir this has been 32 minutes on his Instagram already. He can say goodbye to his followers for the day. It's okay, it's a Saturday morning. In that notebook, I cast a specific detailed vision for how I wanted to emerge on the other side. 38 single line pages describing how I tend to my health, and my mindset, cater to my personal passions, invest in my faith, draw closer to my most important relationships. I even included the most intricate nuances of how I dress, carry myself, and feel when I looked in the mirror. A detailed inventory of the life I wanted came complete with insights into how I'd have to show up if I actually wanted the life I'd been writing down. Never having journaled before, I had no idea how powerful this practice could oh, be. Oh, look, there's his dog. Wrote, that dog is so cute. I love the little days. schnauzer. Almost, He's so cute. Without stopping. When I started each journaling session, the first 20 or so minutes were a warm-up to get out the things sitting at the top of my consciousness. Thoughts? So his thoughts on journaling are pretty good. What he's saying here isn't wrong. Um, but he just keeps reading out of his boring-ass book for a little bit, and then Noah's going to come back in a minute. Where is she? And his son is going to come outside, too. His son, Ford, is about to come out. I think the older two kids that they have are with Rachel, and she's out of town. Oh, also, we need to keep in mind... But all of these kids have not seen their parents. Dave, for the past week, had been on his book tour with Heidi. And the kids had been with the grandparents. And Rachel has been on vacation in Europe somewhere. So the kids have not been with them. The kids are probably missing their dad, who has been on a book tour with Heidi, his girlfriend, all around the West Coast or wherever they were. I don't remember where they were. Arizona, Texas. That's not the West Coast. I don't know where they were. They were going all over the place on a, a book tour. They weren't home with the kids is the point. Uh, so the kids are missing their parents. This is one of her their first days back with Dave, and he is ignoring them to continue promoting his book, which is what he's been spending the entire past week doing. So let's see where we can continue. I don't want to just listen to him read his boring ass. I think I can to try and change your life. I want you to spend 18 bucks to have the book in your hand so you can actually help yourself change it as well. But the thing that I have pride for is not, oh, the cover looks good, or I got to interview these people, or whether it makes a list or not. I, I mean, yeah, do I care? Of course I care, because I have an ego like anyone else does. Yeah, I'd love to make a list. If I don't make a list, is it going to be the thing that takes away my pride for this book? No, 0% chance. Why? Dave, what are you proud of in having written this book? What I'm proud of is that this accomplishment, this thing that I have created, is the closest I have ever come to feeling like I understand the reason why. I agree that it doesn't matter if your book makes a bestseller list. I did a whole video about the New York Times bestseller list and how bestseller lists are not usually accurate anyway. I was given the gifts that I was given and I am now using them in a way that honors the reason why I was created. That's it. So I can have pride, like, oh my goodness, I spent 46 years trying to find a way to connect to purpose. I spent 46 years trying to find a way to connect to why I was on this planet or why I was given these gifts. At 40 years old, I'm gonna tell the story a lot, right? 40 years old, I had, uh, it's not an autobiography, although I do tell a bunch of stories about silly stuff that I get into. It's, it's a little more of a self-help book. It's, it's, it's built, I mean, I'll show you what I showed people earlier. It's built around this idea of a map. And you basically are gonna start by building a little bit of self. You said no one can follow someone else's map and now you're asking them to follow your map. You make no sense, Dave. Oh, and then his daughter's gonna come back out in a second. Did I learn things from other people? Yes. You need those Mickey pancakes? All right, let me finish reading this chapter then we're gonna Mickey pancake it up. Okay, so Dave had said to Noah, right? Like Dave in the comments was being like, uh, we have breakfast at 9.30 and Noah should know that. So she, but literally kids don't really have a concept of how much time has passed. When you're young, this, this, is, this is a fact. I've seen this documented. When you're young, time, you experience time differently than when you're older, right? So like, for example, if you're a small child and your parents say, uh, we'll do this in an hour, an hour feels really long. But as an adult, an hour doesn't feel that long. There's a reason for this. It's that it's how much of a percentage of your life it has been. So if you are two years old, a year feels really, really long to you because that's half of your entire existence. But if you're 40 years old, a year doesn't feel as long to you because it's a much shorter percentage and you've lived so much time that time starts to feel like it's going faster. So time feels faster, the faster, the older you get. So when you're a kid and you say, okay, very soon we're going to have the pancakes. We'll have them in a little bit. Like it feels to her like a lot of time has passed now. And that, and like he said, we'll have pancakes in a couple minutes. We'll have the Mickey pancakes. As soon as I finish reading this chapter, Noah, we're going to have pancakes. 
And uh, as you can see from the timestamp down here, we're not even halfway through this thing. So uh, he still goes on for over another hour before tending to this kid's needs to get her something to eat. And even if he wanted to say like, no, this is this is a thing in our family. We have breakfast at this time. Noah, you're going to have to wait. If this girl's really hungry, like you can get her like a healthy snack. Get her like a piece of fruit or something, Dave. It's way too cold for that outfit out here. It's like 50 degrees. I want you to. Make you need those Mickey pancakes? Yes, right now. Okay. Um, yeah, there you go. Okay. We're going to finish reading about stillness if you were paying attention. She's very cute. She's an adorable kid. Um, but also, he did just promise her that they were going to. He's like, yeah, in just a minute, we're going to have the pancakes. So he is basically setting the expectation. If he if he had stopped to say, hey, Noah, you know what? We have pancakes at 930 on Saturday. That is the, that is the time we have pancakes. We can't make them just yet. You have to be a little patient. We're going to learn some patience today. But if you're really hungry, I can go get you an apple real quick or something. He could have done that, but he didn't. Instead, he's like, okay, Noah, as soon as I finish this, we'll have them in a minute, okay? He's set, giving her the wrong expectation. When you're a kid that's that young, you don't have a concept of this. And I'll tell you what, stillness was something that we were talking about a while ago, but you better go wake up Lolly. I will make those Mickey pancakes, but we got to finish reading this chapter. These people have been patient. They've been decent. Most of them. A couple of them have not been decent at all. They've been indecent. But most of them have been decent. And I'm going... Your kid doesn't know what the word indecent means. These people have been indecent, Noah. Noah, uh, four-year-old child. Hold on. Sorry, Noah. I have to deal with the haters in the chat real quick. What the fuck kind of dad are you being right now, Dave? To... Make Mickey pancakes. Yeah, we're going to make Mickey pancakes when we finish this chapter. But I want you to do it. I'm going to. I'm going to do it. How about this? Why don't you ask Ford to get the uh, ingredients out? Tell him it's time to get up for flag football. And then we'll make some panners. And then I can have a snow cone at football. Yeah, we'll see. That'll be good. We'll do that. Okay. So basically, uh, there's the son is has to get up to go to his football game, uh, and there, there she's like, okay, he's like, okay, go wake up your brother. He's got to go to his football game, and we'll make pancakes. So Dave knows that it's at least an hour until he's going to be able to make pancakes, but he's already telling her to go wake her brother up so that he too can have to wait an extra hour for his breakfast. <laughs> okay, Dave. Then his brother's the the brother's going to come out in a little bit. Snow cone. I mean, the game's like ten, so I'm not sure if we have snow cones, but okay. Where was I? Uh, in the book, I don't know if you've seen this, but my buddy Aaron Tinsley. That too. And like Dave, he's been getting comments in the chat the entire time on this saying like, hey, Dave, it, it's okay. Come back tomorrow. Feed your kid. We, we don't need you to do this. We'd rather your kid get fed. And Dave could have taken this time to address those comments too and say like, say, oh, you know what? I'm going to feed her in a little bit. This is, we we have breakfast at this time and, or, and get her a snack. I, the kid is probably actually hungry. Anyway. I mean, he just crushed all of the drawings. Just so incredibly fantastic. There's the just, drawings are um, pretty at the end good. of each chapter, there's a journaling activity or an open-ended questions prompt. But like, there's just, you know, the hope was like at the end of every single chapter, could I give you something that would allow you to take the passive reading experience and turn it into an active practical thing that you would potentially now learn something. I agree that the journaling prompts were a good idea. I think that giving exercises in a book, it helps the reader engage with it actively. I think I agree that that's a good idea. He was right about that. And from because of you going through as opposed to me telling you about it. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh oh, hey, Kia. Kia's world's here, guys. What's up, Kia? Guys, you should check out Kia has done videos on Dave's this big blow up as well. You should look at her videos. I'm going to watch her most recent one after the stream. Uh, but I've been watching all the other ones and she does a really good job. Someone asked, what is this? Oh, look, it's called Built Through Courage. Face your fears to live the life you were meant for. And uh, I, uh, I'd like you to buy the book. It's available right now. Okay. Having never journaled before, I had no idea how powerful this practice could be. I wrote in my green notebook for three days. almost. Okay. Well, he already read to us about how he journaled. How long is he going to talk about this for? So he's reading from his boring ass book and talking to us about how he wrote in a journal in Arizona. And then we wait 20 more minutes and his daughter comes back. Uh, sacrifices of frontline workers. Also, I want to give a thank you to Arachnid Heist. That is a cool ass username. I love that Arachnid Heist for the super sticker. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Like, yes, there are a lot of terrible things. I'm not saying anyone is interested in COVID being here, but it's here. Okay. So COVID's here. And since it's here, some of the things. So Dave's talking a little bit about COVID, which is uh, a little ironic because Dave and Heidi started dating before the COVID vaccines were out and they were flying back and forth to each other from Texas to Arizona and back each way every single fucking week before there were COVID vaccines, they were doing this. Uh, so Dave doesn't seem perfectly concerned about COVID. Things that we used to normally do, we don't normally do them anymore. But we might think about returning to the things that we normally did once the world allows normal, whatever normal ends up being, come back. And the question is, should it? 
you've been given this like massively huge opportunity to consider what if what you used to do actually served you? What if what you used to do serves who you're becoming? What if what you're, you, know, you used to do acted as an inhibitor that was keeping you stuck or had you feeling down? Noah, in your rush to return to normal, so now Noah's over here like, hey, dad, can you please pay attention to me? And he's like, hey, Noah, how about I read you an inspirational quote from the book? What parts of normal are you going to take some time to consider if they're worth rushing back to? Daddy. I, I, I didn't hear your answer. What, what don't you want? Okay. So Dave, Dave had this quote that he loves to say about COVID where he's like, when COVID's over in our rush to return to normal, we have to stop to consider which parts of normal do we want to return back to? Basically meaning like it's time to reevaluate our lives and our priorities. Great. Good for you. Why are you asking a four-year-old this question? He, this is him using her for content right here because this is not an actual conversation he's having with his four-year-old. This is what I would do with Chewie as a joke. If I'm doing a live stream and Chewie pops in and I'd be like, hey, Chewie, what do you think about Dave Hollis's book? Do you think it sucks too? You do? Wow, you read it? Good for you, bud. You do that with a dog who will never understand you as a joke. You don't do that with a child. He's using his child for content right now. He's asking, hey, Noah, what parts of normal do you want to return back to? Um, She's four, Dave. COVID is pretty much all she's known at this point because her conscious memory doesn't really start before that. Like COVID's been going on for like two fucking years. Um, so this this girl, most of her life has been spent in a pandemic. Uh, so what are you asking her? Which parts of normal, what was normal for her before COVID was like screaming and drinking out of a bottle. I don't think she's going to return to that. So I, I don't get this. I don't get this at all. He's asking her this question as if it's a real question and be like, I didn't hear your answer. No, he's using a child for content right now. He's trying to get the audience to think, haha, that's funny how he's asking a child a high level question. He's just using her for content. I hate it. You want to return to? Daddy. We're preaching out here. No, I need a, I need a, I need a, a strong, confident answer. Daddy. What don't you want to return to? Yes, Noah. Yes, Noah. Why don't you put ingredients? Ford's not getting the ingredients out? Mm -mm. Tell Oh my God. Okay. So he's, she's like, dad, you told me to wake up Ford. Ford's the Dave's other kid. Uh, I think the two older kids are on vacation with Rachel, but Ford is like nine years old. Um, and there, Dave's exploited Ford a lot too. We talked about that on your morning guru. We did an episode of the show called like Dave becomes a family vlogger. And in there we reacted to his show Ford for thought where he gets Ford on camera and Dave's girlfriend, Heidi tries to pry information out of Ford. Uh, shout out to Kia's world. Who's in the chat. She did a fantastic video about this. I highly recommend you check it out. But, uh, he does this video with Ford where he has Heidi asking Ford, like Ford, what did you think about your parents divorce? And like, things like this, like, Oh my God, you don't fucking do that. You weirdo. Tell Ford to come out here. Tell Ford to come out here. He's when he's done with potty, tell him to come out. We're talking to our friends on the internet about. Uh, uh, the okay, why, Dave? Why would you would like want to live stream your kids talking about each other shitting on the toilet? No one wants the to resets hear that. about the opportunity. Sit right here. You can sit right here with me. Come on. Um, yeah, these oh, poor my, kids. Dude. Dude, is, is, your, is your throat okay? So hard, okay, great. We've been given this massive opportunity to inventory what matters and what doesn't matter at all. And if we go back to normal, not having taken advantage of this chance that you had to ditch the stuff that was part of your normal that didn't serve you. My, my yeah, sure. Go, go, go tell Pop. You know my dad? My dad's here. So Dave is now telling Noah to go wake up her grandpa. So Dave, who is already awake and could handle these things if he just got off his live stream, that the chat is telling him to get off of, he's now having Noah wake up. He's having his four-year-old wake up everyone else in the house. He's like, uh, go wake up your older brother. Uh, go wake up your grandpa now. Now he's having her wake up everybody instead of just doing this himself. Go, I would go into his room and I would shake that bed and tell him, Pop, I need you to get up and get me some vitamins. And see Do not shake your grandpa awake. Dave, you wake your own father. Wait, get your daughter her vitamins yourself. What happens? And when he asks who said that you could do it, tell him Jeffrey sent you. Okay? Jeffrey's the dog. You say, Jeffrey sent me in here and tell him, you just say, Dad, Pop, Pop, I need vitamins. He's going to be like, you need to wake me up to get vitamins. So Noah is basically, this is what I'm gathering. Noah has like kids gummy vitamins. This girl is like very hungry at this point and is like, hey, dad, can you make pancakes? And he's like, not yet, Noah. And she's like, okay, well, can I at least have the gummy vitamins? Because she wants to fucking eat something. And so Dave is like, okay, but go wake up grandpa to get you your vitamins. Dave, you could just you could just say, guys, I'll be back in a moment. Put the phone down, leave it on the patio of peace, mute it and, and say, Audi and then tell the audience you'll be back in a minute. I do that on my stream sometimes. If I'm streaming for four hours and I'm like, I have to pee because I'm drinking too much coffee, I uh, I do a little we'll be right back song because you, you can just tell the audience you'll be right back. No one's going to be mad. Get Noah the vitamins yourself and let her know what the schedule for the day looks like. Don't just, don't just brush her off like this. 
Is that funny to you? Is that funny to you? Go wake up, Pop. I, I, I dream of Pop coming here so we can wake him up to get vitamins. If he had to golf this morning, he'd be up. I'll tell you right now. Now Dave is shit-talking his own father, being like, uh, Grandpa would already be up if he had to golf this morning. Yeah, maybe he would. He doesn't have any commitments this morning, Dave. You're the one who made a commitment to shout on a live stream all morning. Why does Grandpa have to be awake for that? Let Grandpa sleep in. Take care of your own child. If Pop had a golf outing, he'd, he'd be up. So he might as well get up when he's not golfing and grab some vitamins. Um, we've had this huge, we just had this huge opportunity, right? And I just... Yeah, Grandpa, how about you go take care of my kid for me? I, I, I want to make sure that there is an appreciation that it's not too late. It is not too late for you to still do the inventory of what that was previously in your day-to-day, -day, what that was previously clogging your calendar, whatever the things that you previously committed to, you are unavailable for after this COVID is done. Just, I'm unavailable. I'm so sorry. I wish that I could accommodate that request. It is misaligned, unfortunately, with the direction that I'm heading. I'm so, so sorry that I'm unavailable to answer this call. Whatever the call is, I'm so sorry. I'm not able to do it. Um, the thing is, I, I, um, I find a way to do it really respectfully. I don't apologize anymore. Um, and I hope that doesn't make me mean, but I don't feel like um, letting someone... Yeah, Dave, Dave, ex-husband of the woman who famously wrote, Girl, Stop Apologizing, doesn't apologize. Dave right here is like, I don't apologize anymore, which is funny because Dave did make an apology for this video, which we're going to read in a few minutes. No, that their request is misaligned with who I've been created to be or the way that my heart is lit on fire. I just say, oh, you know what? I'm unavailable. I've actually committed my time in this area, in this space, and um, I'm going to stay. Oh, for people asking why it's sped up, it's sped up because it's two hours long and I want to get through as much of it as possible. And also him talking slow is very boring focused on this because this is where I think my gifts are best used. I think this is where I am closest to honoring the intention of why God put me here. And um, and I respect that, man. The thing that you want me to do is about supporting what you believe God has put you on this planet for, but you're going to find somebody else who has that same kind of calling, right? Um, I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm unavailable. It is a boundary. Yes, I'm going to miss, miss uh, Nat Polito said it's a boundary. Can we hold that for a sec? Say hi, people. Hi, everybody. There, now he's, there's his daughter. She's still out there trying to get her Coming dad's right attention. Up. Coming right up. There we go. One, two. One, two. Here we go. Um, anyway, in the rush to return to normal, let's use this time to consider which parts of normal are worth rushing back to. It is not too late. Please, 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 please. Don't let this opportunity to reset. Don't let this opportunity to inventory what of what you do today is aligned with your personal values, is aligned with your calling, is aligned with your faith, is aligned with your heart, is aligned with your peace, your pursuit of peace. I agree. Normal doesn't exist. You know, I, I completely agree with this. Normal does not exist. So you have to define what normal is. It's really interesting. Um, I was having a conversation with someone about balance. And balance is, uh, it's just such an, it's just such an interesting. So he starts to obsess about balance. He never actually gets to talking about balance because his kids keep coming in. And then he's like, all right, then we'll get back to balance. No one gives a fuck about balance. People just want you to feed your kid. Concept. You know how earlier in this, Dave's like, we're not talking about peace. We're talking about buying my book. People in the audience should have turned that around and be like, Dave, we're not talking about balance. We're talking about feeding your child. Go feed your fucking child, Dave. Because um, balance ends up feeling like this thing that like TED Talk types want to like, you know, all the time. Are you messing with Jeff? You know, Jeff doesn't like you mess with. I, I, I would, I would definitely, I would definitely not mess with Jeff. Looks on me this morning. He was up here with me this morning. I was yelling at these people on accident. I was just, I was just a little cranky. Cause I hadn't slept very much. Getting excited about my book. What? Did you tell these people we have a tea time book coming out? Oh, come over here. You gotta tell them. They're gonna be so excited to hear this. It's so exciting. Now he wants his four-year-old to advertise the book that he wrote about her to exploit her for content even more. Tea time book coming out. Bye, What? What are you saying? The tea time book. What? The tea time book comes out my. Five? The tea time book comes out the week that Noah turns five. So I'm super, super here for it. I'm sorry that I'm going topic to topic, but uh, we just turned in the final, final art. It looks so amazing uh, when the document. The art does not look amazing. The art looks like he made Noah's skin lighter. Three uh, is in theaters on November 17th. So y'all, here's my plan. I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to go see Dave's documentary because I'm going to do the 12 Daves of Christmas. We did Dave Tober for October. Uh, now we're in November and I need a little, like, I was going to say I need a break from Dave. That's why I'm live streaming for two hours about a Dave, of course. Uh, but we're going to have uh, 12 Daves of Christmas. We're going to talk about his documentary at the beginning of December. I think for the first 12 days of December instead of Vlogmas, <laughs> I'm just going to do a video about a Dave each day, or at least I'm going to try to. We're trying to do the 12 Daves of Christmas. So we'll talk about him. We're going to talk about Dave Port Portnoy from Barstool Sports on all the fucking shit he just got into. We'll talk about David Foster Wallace just because he's one of my least favorite Daves. We'll talk about Dave Green of Hobby Lobby, uh, who because uh, a lot of people shop at Hobby Lobby for Christmas stuff. Twelve Daves of Christmas is going to be fun. Uh, the pre-show will actually feature uh, the reveal of what the book looks like. I actually read it during the pre-show. So if you're going to go to the documentary, uh, I would just tell you real quick. There's 20 minutes of content. I'll do a review of the book. I'll I'll review it based on what he reads during the documentary before showtime where there's a brand new never before seen episode of Ford for thoughts there's an episode of tea time there, hey 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 hey, hey. simmer down now you're at a nine i'm gonna need you to get a four 
No, I'm, I'm, no, no, no. I'm gonna need you to four. You have to need you like a two. I'm gonna be honest. Jeff's a two kind of guy. Um, but uh, the, the first 20 minutes, there's uh, some information on an upcoming men's conference that I'm throwing. There's information on the next uh, Dave and Heidi. I love that Dave is telling his four year old to calm down when she is like way calmer than he's been all day. She's just been out there like, hey, dad, I'm hungry. I want pancakes. And she's saying it in like a, co a quiet and polite voice. And Dave's over here like, buy my book. We're talking about buying my book. It's eighteen dollars. Like Dave's way. He's she's like he's like I'm gonna need you at a two here at a nine. Dave's the one out of nine over here. He is projecting. Um, I also think it's important. Like so, when I taught, I taught creative writing to kids for uh like three or four years, as I've talked about. During that time teaching, I learned a lot about how you have to match the different lessons to the different age groups. And this might be this might be uh very basic for a lot of people in this chat because I know a lot of people in my audience have kids. I don't have kids, so this might be obvious to you. But for me, right when I was teaching, sometimes I would teach a workshop to a group of high schoolers. And sometimes I teach a similar workshop to a group of second graders. Those two groups of people obviously have very different educational needs. So if I'm going to teach a workshop on how to do poetry, on how to write poetry, and I'm going to teach it to a group of high schoolers, we can go a little more into the depth of the poem, uh, even when we're talking about the same thing. So here's an example of what I would do in a workshop. So in a poetry workshop, sometimes I would teach kids about repetition as a literary device that you can use in poetry. And we would look at a poem that had a line repeated throughout it and talk about how that use of repetition works in the poem. When I'm teaching that to a group of high schoolers, I might tell them, I might ask them, okay, so you read this poem, there's this line repeated throughout the poem. At the beginning, when this line is said, what does it mean to the, to the author when they say it at the beginning? What does it mean to the author when they say it at the end? What does it mean in the middle? Does this line change meaning based on context and based on the progression of the story told within the poem? We might ask questions like that that are a little more high level versus when I'm working with a group of second graders and I ask them about, uh, the poem with repetition, I might say, okay, this line repeats, what does that do? And they might say, uh, it, it, it makes you remember the line more. Like, yeah, it does. Does it add rhythm to the poem? Does it make it sound like a song? How can we, we compare a poem to a song? How are they similar? Do you want to try to sing the poem? We might try things at a very different level because asking them to look at a repeated line in context and look at how it changes is a little bit above their reading and writing level at that point because kids' brains are developing and they're developing those skills. You can still use a lot of that stuff and, and work with them on that, but you have to make sure it's at their level. And that is what Dave is not doing at all here, is he is talking to Noah the way he talks to his audience, which doesn't work because she is four years old. And she does not comprehend things the way his audience comprehends things. So when he talks to her in the same way he talks to his audience using big words saying, some of these people are being indecent, actually, Noah, it's he's trying to make a joke. He's trying to say, look, audience, look at how I talk to my daughter like she's an adult. Isn't that funny? It's, it's, it's very obvious that what he's saying, he's not talking to her for her. He's talking to her for his audience. He's trying to put on a show with her for his audience to see because there's no way she's understanding most of what he's trying to say. You get Fit Challenge. There's information on a new podcast that Heidi and I are doing. There's um, a, a whole host of different things. But among them, uh, the book is called Here's to Your Dreams, A Tea Time with Noah Book. And it comes out 2, 22, 22. And I'm super, super excited about it. All right, I'm going to talk about balance. I started talking about balance. Uh, what are you doing? Oh, you're showing your nails? Who did those nails? Did Lolly do it? So Noah's grandma did her nails and she's trying to get Dave's attention because when Dave usually has the phone out, it's to record her doing cute things. So how the fuck does she know the difference that this is not supposed to be him recording her doing cute things because that's what he's always asking her to do for the camera. This time the camera's out for him to talk to the audience and he wants her to go away. How does she know the difference? Also, she's just hungry. This poor kid, dude. Lolly did it. My mom did it. Ooh. Unbelievable. Okay. So Lauren asks, if we can't make it to the theater, is there another way we can view it? So there is. Um, and we will, I'm gonna put this up on a landing page. If you can't make it to the theater and you want to watch the documentary, buy a ticket to the documentary in theaters. And then we will email you a digital copy of the movie and the bonus that runs after it. And frankly, probably the pre-show the following day. Yeah, so I'm the gonna go see the movie day. in the theater for so, y'all. Uh, if you buy topics, then ever. I, here's the deal I'm looking to make with anyone who's on live right now. Might, I will give you every single thing that I have. I might uh, go get some edibles first, see what the movie's like, hi, and find out. Let's continue. For Sally, Amy's daughter. Okay, so we're an over. We're almost an hour and twenty minutes into this. I'm trying to skip ahead because Dave just reading his boring ass book is not fun for anyone. Yeah, I don't. Need, I, I don't. I don't need your book, Dave. You know what? I hope that Amy will read my book so that Sally doesn't need to buy it. That's real. What's up? What's up, babe? How can I help you? I want you to make Mickey cake. Do you Do you understand that when? Okay, so Noah's come back. It's it. We're an hour and eighteen minutes into this stream. Dave has told her repeatedly. 
As soon as I finish reading this chapter, I'll get you the pancakes. Dave has read a lot of shit from this book. This girl probably doesn't even know how to read yet, so she does not know when the chapter ends. When you ask like this in front of our friends on the internet, they think that I am a terrible person. Do not put our friends on the internet as a burden on your four-year-old. She is not responsible for what people on the internet think. That is your responsibility, Dave. When I go jump up immediately. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your hats. All right, so there's Dave's son who's getting ready for football. It's Mr. Ford Hollers! Ford, I need you to do something that will change the way these people feel interested in showing up for their life. Okay. Do you think a nine-year-old understands to change the way that people feel interested in showing up for their life? I am 29 years old and I don't understand what that means. There is no way that this kid understands what that means. So I need you, yeah, Sarah, I'm gonna go back to balance. I know, I know, you're excited about balance. I'm gonna get back. Yeah, no one's excited, no one cares about balance. Everyone just wants you to feed your kids. There, we're just, it's, it's Saturday. We might be on this live for the rest of time, literally. I might have mail sent to this live from now on. I, might I know that's a joke, but like, how do you think your kids feel hearing that when they've been repeatedly asking you for breakfast? I never get up. I am enjoying this patio. I'm excited about this patio. I'm excited that Ford's finally come out on this patio. Ford, what time's your game at today? 10.30. 10.30. We got a 10.30 game. People talking about snow cones for a 10.30 game. Out of their mind. 10.30 game, and he won't feed them until 9.30. Get off the live and feed them. Fine. It's crazy. No, I actually... Uh, that, the game ends at 12. The game ends at 12. Well, 12 o'clock's the proper time for a snow cone, so I think it's fine. No, 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 no. I was not saying shut up, Sarah. I appreciate you. I love you. Goodness gracious. Uh, if you're just joining us, uh, my name's Dave. That's Ford Hollis. He is a literal genius. He was put on this earth to do insanely audacious things. Like, you want to see a world change? A nine-year-old does not know what audacious means, Dave. He's talking to his kids for the audience, not for them. It's so obvious. Sure. Everyone close your eyes just for one second, okay? Everyone close your eyes. No, close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Everyone close your eyes, okay? Now, everyone open your eyes. This is Fort Hollis, okay? You just opened your eyes to a world changer. This man, this man, Fort Hollis, Fort Hollis is going to, and I don't mean figuratively, figuratively change the world. No, literally. He's literally going to change the world. Doing what, Ford? And this is the important thing. Whatever he works hard at and whatever he loves and whatever brings his heart to fire mode, that's what you're going to do, right? And we're going to support and celebrate that you are amazing in all ways, just like you are. Saying, I, don't, I still don't know about career Don't know what your career Dude. <laughs> So Dave's talking about, our, he's going to be amazing. And, oh, sorry. The doorbell rang and Chewie's barking now. So for, he's telling, Ford over here is like, uh, I still don't know what my career is going to be, Dad. Sorry about Chewie. Hey, Chewie. I'm not going to tell Chewie to get a life. Poor dog just wants to know who's at the door. It's probably an Amazon package. Um, so Dave is over here like, uh, although if I told Chewie to get a life, that'd be kind of funny because he's a dog. It's not going to have any impact on him. Um, so he's over here like, Ford's going to do whatever he wants to do with his life. He's got, oh, there's Chewie. Hey, Chewie, do you want pancakes, buddy? You can have pancakes as soon as I finish this live stream. It might be in three hours. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, so he's like, what kind of like the kid responds with dad i don't know what i want my career to be yet like of course he doesn't he's nine anyway let's continue career is at nine well i guess we're lucky we don't live in some uh, other places outside of dripping springs texas because in dripping springs not knowing what you're gonna do at 46 ends up actually also being okay so so dave is 46 and he's like not knowing what you want to do at 46 is also okay dave you just wrote this whole book about how you found your purpose and you found your calling and you have this calling and this purpose and you have to do this but then you just admitted that you don't actually know what you want to do. Well, that makes a lot of sense considering this book never makes it clear what Dave's actual purpose is, just that he's found it. I also want to shout out Spence right here. Spence, thank you so much for the super chat. Spence is an awesome mom. She really is. She is a fantastic mom. And I can tell that just from knowing her over the internet. Spence right here says, can I mom shame him for not having a snack basket? Yes, you can. Why can your kid not have like a little healthy snack when they wake up? Your kid's hungry, Dave. I'm hungry right right away when I wake up. As a kid, it feels even worse because you have no control over your life. At least when I'm hungry, I can just walk to Dunkin' Donuts and get a donut or whatever I want because I'm an adult. When you're a kid, you can't eat until your parents allow you to eat. Does Dave not remember how awful that is? Oh, my God. You're so right, Spence. Dave needs to have a snack basket. So we're good. We're good. All right. Uh, I know. Lauren, I do need to sleep, and I do appreciate that. I can't, You know I can't sleep? This is what's crazy. I know I come off a little bit like a crazy person, but I am, I've been so fired up about the book. And this is like, I don't know how else to explain it. It's like, it's a little bit tough because um, if you ever find yourself working on something that you are just like, you, you would talk about all day, that like you would talk about all day, that you do 40 consecutive days of teaching. Like, I know I come off a little bit like a crazy person right now. And I just. 
Okay, it's not even 40 consecutive days. It's 40 consecutive weekdays. That means he's taking Saturday and Sunday off, which he's not taking the Saturday off where he did this. But he said 40, 40 consecutive weekdays. That's that's what, eight weeks? My show has been going for eight months, Dave. I, I've done eight consecutive months of my show. Legitimately, don't care how I come off as long as someone sits up and pays attention to this thing that I have so much passion for. Because I'm, Alex, I'm going to DM you back, brother. We're going to have ourselves a little one-on-one -on -one time later. Uh, where's Heidi? Heidi is in um, Heidi is in Phoenix, Arizona. She lives uh, just outside of Phoenix. Uh, she headed back home, and uh, and she is gonna spend the weekend with her kiddos, and uh, they're gonna do some Halloween. We're gonna try and do it all as a crew here, and then we just realize like there's some traditions that we have that they have the Dad, idea of like when the stealing. Goes down, we're gonna do trick or treating. Not tonight, but tomorrow. I like what you're saying. Yeah. Um, so Noah's just trying to be a part of things. She's like, "Yeah, Dad, we're going trick or treating," and he's like, uh, "Tomorrow we're going trick or treat." Yeah, good, but like, go feed her. But Heidi and I also, man, like we had the blessing of uh, her exes, my parents yeah, jumping in oh, last minute to take on helping watch humans so that we could do uh, a book tour that was not planned. So, uh, and yeah, because you just got back from a book tour. Your kids haven't seen you all week and they just want your attention and for you to feed them. That is so sweet. I'm working on a very powerful frequency. And the thing is, I don't know what that means. Dave just said, I'm working at a very powerful frequency and I don't know what that means. Nobody knows what that means. It's not because that doesn't mean anything. I'm working at a very powerful frequency right now. No, you're not. You're just ignoring your kids. It's not that deep. I agree with it. And you know why I agree with it? Because I'm freaking passionate about this stinking book. And so hey, say stinking I didn't book. mean to say stinking. You know how much I like this book. No, I would never disparage Bill Through Courage. Uh I think it was Mac that pointed this out too, that a kid doesn't know what disparage means. But Dave's like, I'm so passionate about this stinking book. And Noah's like, oh. Is that a swear word? It's kind of like how kids think shut up is a swear word. It's like something that he probably tells her not to say a lot because he doesn't want her to be expressing anger like that way. So he's like, she's like, don't say a stinking book, dad. Don't say that. And he's like, I'm sorry, Noah. You know, I never disparage the book. Noah does not know what disparage mean. I learned the word disparage in my eighth grade vocabulary book when I was 14. Um, here's what it is. I'll just say what it is and then stay up. I know I'm gonna stay up. Oh. This is what it is. Okay. I had a career in entertainment for 20 years, okay? I had a career in entertainment yeah. for 20 years where I perpetually, by society, by masculinity, by executives, by my family of origin, um, had carrots dangled in front of me of my being able to feel a certain way when, okay? Uh, hello, if you get to this title, if you get to this amount of security, salary, if you get to this status, if you get invited to these rooms, then. Before then, you're not gonna feel it, but once you get it, then you will. Yeah, I'm going to respond to a few comments because there's some good ones here. Blank Space Photography says, your daughter's asking if stinking is a swear word, so it only makes sense to hit her with disparage, right? <laughs> right? Like, does he not understand that there's two different levels of talking going on here? Um, a lot of people, and this is the thing, I, uh, Rachel here in the comments says, I have bipolar and he generally appears manic. Well, hypomanic, but it's still bad. That's the thing is like, I do not want to ever diagnose someone online. I do not want to speculate on someone's mental health. That's why I said at the beginning that like, to me, as an audience member of this, it comes off like Dave might be on a substance. I don't I don't want to accuse him of that, though, because I don't know if that is true. Same thing with mental health. I have had a lot of manic episodes in my life. And I do, I'm not diagnosed with bipolar. I'm diagnosed with OCD. But my, you know, a lot of mental illnesses have a lot of overlap and sharing symptoms. They kind of, they kind of exist on the spectrum, right? So I, I have OCD and I have had manic episodes in my life. And this is reminiscent of that to me. I can I can see how that is reminiscent of that. So it's it it is possible that it's something like that. I'm not Dave's therapist, so I don't ever want to talk about someone's I just a big disclaimer. I'm not saying that I know what's going on with Dave's mental health. But yes, as someone who has had manic episodes, I have felt the way that Dave is feeling right now or the way that he's expressing his feelings right now. And I think what's 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 hit me hard about this live stream is that there are things in this that I can relate to. I have been where Dave has been, where I have written a book and put it out there and it didn't sell very well, where I've written a book and put it out there and some people didn't like it, or where I've set up a book signing for myself and not very many people showed up, or I wanted to take a book on tour, but it wasn't doing well. I've been there. I've put out 11 books. I've been where Dave has been. But this isn't the way you you react to that. Instead, you, like he does with all his journaling prompts, it's time to reflect and say, what went well? What do I need to do more of? What went wrong? What's something new I can try? What's something new I can try to get more buzz about this book in the future? What's a way that my audience, what, what about this is my audience connecting with and what are they not connecting with that I need to help them with in the future? Like things like that. So that that's what Dave is not doing right. I've been exactly where he's been. And being mean to your followers, being rude to your audience, 
and just yelling at your audience about how they how they need to buy your book or get get out of here. That's not how you handle this. That is not how you handle this. Okay. So I believe that that was real. I believe that that was real. And then I worked really hard. I was an achiever. I am an achiever. And I'm a three on the Enneagram. So for whatever reason, my wiring, this is not ideal, but it was very- I'm also a three on the Enneagram. Very helpful in building a career, building a company, okay? Um, I unfortunately or fortunately connected doing things, right? Achieving things with my worth, right? If I, and I see, so Paisley, I, in my last book, wrote a chapter about an Enneagram, and I did take a test called... So now he's just talking about the Enneagram and how he tested as a nine, but he then took it again, and now he's a three. I'm a three on the Enneagram. It's all good. Skip ahead, because this is boring. Just bounce, and I got to go make Mickey Mouse pancakes. Okay, so what I kept getting these thresholds. Kept getting these thresholds. I kept being promised the things I would get at those thresholds in terms of how I would feel fulfillment, how I would... Here's the thing. Dave is, like, talking in this about, like, finding what's important in life, finding what you want to prioritize. Meanwhile, his children are right behind him wanting his attention and wanting to spend time with him on the patio of peace. And he is insisting he's an hour and a half into this and is still going. Feel proximity to purpose, how I would feel like I was in my calling, how I... Like, all of it, right? And I never learned the lesson. I just never learned the lesson. That, oh, no, <laughs> these are the carrots that are created by the systems that hope that we keep believing in the lies that the systems depend on to have us each continue on the hamster wheel. I didn't learn my lesson. I just kept thinking. Dave has still not learned his lesson because right now you're continuing on the hamster wheel of producing nonstop content for your audience when in reality you should be spending time with your children who haven't seen you in a week and are demanding your attention because they miss you. You know what? I just haven't gotten to that high enough level. I've been invited to that big table, but there's one more big table there. And the thing is, I was climbing up the wrong stinking ladder. Noah told you not to say stinking, Dave. He was climbing up the wrong stinking ladder. Okay, so guys, we've been going for two hours and there's still more Dave to cover. I want to take a quick break because I'm going to get more coffee and uh, then we'll be back. Uh, so everyone, feel free to take a break to go to the bathroom right now. Here is the two minute. Where's the two minute break for bathroom? We're going to put on the break song. I will be right back and we will continue with this. But there's a lot more of Dave to cover because we still got the last 30 minutes of this live. And then we which is not going to take 30 minutes. He's on 1.75 speed and I'm skipping around. And then we have his apology. And then we have his book club. So we've got a lot to go through still. I'm glad you all are staying here with me. <laughs> be chewy. <laughs> I already fed chewy. <laughs> anyway, hold on. I will be to put on the Be Right Back song and I will be right back.
right, unmuted. I am back, y'all. Let's take down the banner. We're not on a break for the bathroom anymore. Uh, shout out to Katie Shesko, who is in the chat, who did that beautiful flute music. Uh, she wrote the song for the Your Morning Guru channel that we use for our stream starting soon song because we wanted all original music. And now I'm using it for this channel as well because I wanted a, a real song to associate with things and not just... Uh, not just some stock music. So shout out to Katie for doing an excellent job on that music. I've got some more coffee and we are going to go back to Captain Dave's shipwreck. We're going to continue this. We're going to look at his apology and we're going to look at his book club. So I hope everyone is enjoying your Friday afternoon with me. Let's continue. Paisley, I appreciate your notes. Uh, I am exhausted, but I'm on fire for this. So just stick with me, please. Um, so I was climbing the wrong ladder. And I think that so often we have these dangled carrots happening that just keep trying to convince us to keep climbing up the ladder, that if we just one more rung, one more rung, one more rung. I get what Dave is saying here, but this is an instance of him not practicing what he preaches. So I think he's basically trying to say that like, you know, in life we're pressured to hit certain expected thing there's certain things that people expect of us like that you'll be happy if you make a, a certain amount of money or you won't be happy until you reach a certain level and that there's something to be said for being happy about the process of, of achieving those goals during the time or about finding what goals you really actually care about or what's most important to you i think what he's saying is true however it's completely hypocritical of him to be ignoring his kids to be on social media Unless being a social media influencer is his goal, which I didn't think it was because he was talking about how he spent too much time following Rachel's dream and not his dream, but he's just doing the exact same thing as Rachel still. One more rung. We're going to get finally to that place where the thing that has been missing, the peace that we're looking for, the fulfillment we dream of, the connection to purpose we want, that will finally happen when you actually get to some rung of the rap ladder. And the reality is that is only true. Oh, Colleen stole it. That is only true if you're climbing the right ladder. Is that right? <laughs> Uh, that's Colleen didn't steal it, Dave. You you already said it earlier. She was just repeating it. You okay? Look off. Look off. Um, I had an amazing career. An amazing career. Okay, I had an amazing career, and I could have climbed. That please don't please don't tip her back, brother. I'm trying to have a nice peaceful uh, little bit of time here on the patio piece. All right. We're on the patio piece. In case you forgot, we're on the patio piece, y'all. <laughs> Hold on. I got to show you guys this. I got to show you guys this. this. is the patio piece. When I was in New Orleans, I was taking footage of Sean Boston, the puppet, which like, if you ever read Cancel Sean Boston, then why are you following me? If you don't own all 11 of my books, that was a joke. You don't have to go buy my books for real. Um, but we decided we took Sean Boston, the puppet to a wine bar and then took him to his own little patio of peace at the wine bar on the wine bar patio. Uh, so hold up. I want to, I just, we showed this this morning on your morning guru, but I think it's funny. So I'm going to show it here. Hey everybody. It's Sean Boston. I'm just out here chilling on my patio of peace. I'm out here chilling on my patio of peace. Uh, I learned from my friend, Dave Hollis. Uh, I don't know if he's a friend or he's more of a mentor to me, but I learned that you're supposed to all have a patio of peace. So this is my patio of peace. It's very peaceful here. Um, and I want to know why you're following me if you haven't bought my book. Hey, Sean, that is rude. You shouldn't just tell people that they need to follow you. Uh, Toilet Frog, I want to answer real quick. Sean Boston the Puppet does not have his uh, American flag socks on because he does not even have his legs attached. I had to detach the legs from the puppet so that I could transport him to the wine bar. They need to buy your book if they want to follow you. People can just follow you for fun without buying your book. That's not right. No. If you follow me, you have taken part in a social contract. And it means you should buy my book, Cancel Sean Boston, now available on Amazon. It is only $14.69 or $4.20 Blaze It for the ebook. Sean, that is not very nice. We don't hard sell to people. Sean, no, hey, we don't. And then there's a uh, RK from the other side taking a hold of the the puppet, the puppet's arm uh, arm rod to try to shut me up with it. <laughs> I don't tell people like that. We're not Dave. That's so that's so rude, Sean. Uh, I needed to uh, boot Savvy off of my patio of peace. Uh, I just flung her into space because she was over here disrupting my patio of peace. I'm going to go back to being peaceful and enjoying my wine right here. I need to go get myself some more wine. <sighs> Getting drunk for my Zoom call with Lindsay tonight. She's got some fine ass titties. Uh, anyway, so that is, uh, that's Sean Boston, the puppet. <laughs> From our book canceled on Boston, we we decided to put him on his own patio of peace. <laughs> anyway, let's continue with Dave. Sorry, I had to do that little interlude. I thought that was funny. I could climb a ladder 
for the rest of time. When I came to my bosses at Disney to let them know that I was going to leave that career for what I believe to be a calling into a new space. The, 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 there were two Wait, so he thought his calling was to take over Rachel's company. You guys saw the review I did of his book on my channel last Friday. In that review, I included some video clips where uh, he and Rachel are talking about how he wouldn't leave his job at Disney unless Rachel would let him be CEO. So Dave, in his infinite allyship, in how much of an ally he is to women in his life, decided to take the CEO position in his wife's company and convince her that he would be better at being a CEO than her. So he did that. And... Uh, he took over the CEO position and left Disney because he said that this was his calling. So at the time, he thought his calling was being CEO of Rachel's company. And then Rachel left his ass, as you do. And now he's like, my calling is writing this book about shipwrecks and ships in the harbor and boats and sailing the seas. Yes, Toilet Frog, he is sailing on the ally ship. I would not be surprised if Dave got a real boat in his midlife crisis and named it the ally ship, especially considering he literally has the ally tattoo. He literally has a tattoo that says ally. It's damn. Two people I had to sit down with, two big people. Uh, one was the chairman of the studio guy named Alan Horn, just an unbelievable leader, he's like 75, been around forever and ever. And he was just decent. He's just a good, good man. And I walked into his office and I said, hey, Alan, uh, I have to leave. Uh, I know that I've recently signed a contract and I feel terrible about having to ask you to allow me to leave it early. But I know that I have to pursue this. I want to move my family and I want to do this. Um, and I want you to support me. And he said, wait a second, hold on. You know, and he just, he loved me. We were very, very close. And he said, um, it must be nice to have higher up people at Disney to love you. That must help you get far in your career. And he, this was his love speaking, but I actually have come to appreciate that this was likely his fear speaking. Such a good man. I love him so much. 75 year old man running Disney stuff. Dave's an ally. Feel like being a straight white man probably helped him in this case. And I, 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 my thing on this channel is never just saying this person's a straight white man and therefore they, they must have not really worked. Right. I, I'm not about that. I, I look at an issue in more complexity than that. But just with how much Dave emphasizes being an ally, it's a little ridiculous how much he ignores all the advantages that he has, especially financial privilege. Dave has never struggled financially. So much. He just retired. Um, he said, Dave, I know the kind of lifestyle I can create for your family for the rest of your life. I know what... I know what can happen here for you, and I don't know that you can do the things that I can do for you here, there. And I said, you know, respectfully, I know there's some privilege in this, so I appreciate that, right? I was in a position where we had some savings. I could make a decision to step away from a job. That is a privilege. I understand it. But I said, um, Alan, I... I it's not just that you had savings. It's also that your wife was literally running a successful company at this point. Dave really likes to just like throw Rachel under the bus constantly. You guys know how many problems I've had with Rachel on this channel. I'm just saying... But I'm on her side in this divorce. I am. I'm on Team Rachel. I don't like a lot of the things she did. I don't like a lot of the messages she promoted in her career. And I will criticize those. But when it comes to this divorce, when it comes to the way that Dave treated her in this company, he was absolutely in the wrong. And the, even the way he's acting about it now, uh, we had some savings. We had some sa You had your wife's entire income. You were a two-income household. And you were both making fucking bank. Appreciate this. This isn't about what you can do for me here, it's what I can do for me there. Because I am climbing the wrong organization. And he said, are you sure? Are you sure? I mean, he was kind of pleading with me. It was really, he's just so, he was so decent and generous. He's pleading with me. And uh, I said, Alan, I love you so much. And I could work at this job for the rest of my life. And I would be rich. And I don't know how long I would live. I just want to cry a little bit. Um, I said, you know, the headline is, uh, I have to leave to save my life. Because being disconnected from purpose, uh, being in a position where your team is so strong and that organization was so strong and the intellectual property was so strong that I didn't have to study to get good grades on tests. It was just about, and I know it's not the worst thing, like to play a small violin for me, I had a job that paid well and it wasn't fun. Uh, it wasn't that it wasn't fun. It wasn't, it wasn't the job I was put on the planet for. Yes, please. I, I wasn't put on the planet. To what job were you put on the planet for? The Disney thing is the most interesting thing he's ever done. Do that job. I was put on the planet to do the job I'm doing now. And the reason, Paisley or anyone, that I might look a little bit tired. How about you pay attention to your daughter who keeps tapping you? I am so freaking excited about this book that I am in the middle of the night, getting up, thinking of ideas for how I can talk to people about it because after climbing the wrong ladder for so long, now I am. Yeah, so Dave is not sleeping. He's getting up in the middle of the night. His mouth is dry. That's why I thought maybe 
maybe he did he did a substance before he got here. I don't know for sure. I'm just saying there's a there's a few red flags. So good, good news, you guys finally got me there. Okay. I call this the panda gummy bear. Oh, raspberry the panda thing. gummy bear raspberry bracelet. Good work for it. This is a little, this is a little bit of a smaller uh, risk. So no, Alice, this is for you. No, I, I climbed the wrong ladder Dad, you... for twenty oh, no, 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 years. No, 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 no. So his so his son came and brought him a, a little bracelet that he made, I guess, out of gummy bears or something. And his dad just kind of brushes, Dave just brushes it off and is like, oh yeah, this doesn't fit my wrist. Here you go, Noah. Kids, go away. Like he's, the kids are trying so hard to get his attention and he's doing nothing. Uh, well, let's skip forward to where Ford comes out in a dinosaur outfit. Is that, oh no, he's still here. The kids are just still hanging out on the patio with them, trying to get dad's attention. It's been like an hour since they've been out here. And he said, I'll give you pancakes in a minute once I finish this. Uh, still hasn't seemed to finish it. Uh, so he's reading more of his boring ass book. Of the things I like to do in my spare time. Praise be. I'm a nerd for sports memorabilia. Don't say nerd. Nerd? That's okay. I'm a nerd. I actually enjoy running. I'm carving out time to learn how to play the guitar. A thing I always wanted to do. A seemingly small assignment that led to so many interesting breakthroughs about where passions lie in my search for why. And literally it does say, praise be. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a chapter on stillness. I think we, uh, I think we may have spent eight hours or so going through six pages. So that's fantastic. Um, Built Through Courage, name of the book. My ask of you is that we uh, agree to a deal. I'm going to do... Uh, I'm not going to say stinking again because that would uh, definitely throw us off. The sun has definitely come up. It's a little warm out here. Uh, I am going to, starting on Wednesday, well, Tuesday night, uh, we're going to do a webinar. Webinar. What's a webinar? Yeah. It's, oh no, uh, it's like a meeting on the computer. So Tuesday night, we're going to talk about 10 pillars of courage. If you have bought the book, whether you pre-ordered it or if you buy it this week, again. I will not say stinking. I am not interested in that. I, don't say stinking. I won't. I'm not going to. Uh, we're going to do this webinar on the 10 pillars of courage on Tuesday night. And then when Noah's very cute and Dave just doesn't care at all. He's so rude. She's so cute. Oh, yeah, and then then, then uh, he didn't pay any attention to Ford giving him a gummy bracelet. So instead, I'm not Ford's tempted to tell them to do things on the weekends. Suit. And uh, I think on Monday, that's when they're going to drop me the landing page. I'll probably come on here. Probably not rambling as long. Hopefully, I'll have had a little bit more sleep. Thank you for those of you that very generously pointed out that I look tired. No one likes to hear that more than me. Trust me. Um, but I think on Monday morning, I'll probably come on and hang out. How will it change your life? All right, on a Friday, 83, tell me something that currently is getting in the way of you connecting to peace or you connecting to fulfillment or you connecting to purpose or you I'd say the biggest thing getting in the way of my peace is Dave. you connecting to joy or you <laughs> connecting to fulfillment one thing anything if you can tell me one thing that is currently a block for you with any of those things I will tell you how this book will help you because whatever block it is this book will help you yeah guess what you, it, I mean myself is a great answer from uh I can't shoot I missed the name but um uh, myself is, is actually likely the answer uh, and so if, if the answer, oh, we got a dinosaur coming outside, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah, geez, don't so wonder. now Ford is in a whole ass dinosaur suit coming outside. Holly here says, look at the different ways Noah has tried to get his attention. The thing that finally worked was for her to just boost his ego and make him feel good. That is a dangerous pattern to teach her. Exactly. Exactly. So, okay. I trust Holly because Holly is actually a therapist. We love having Holly in the chat. We love having Holly as a guest star on Your Morning Guru because Holly has a degree in I believe psychology and I believe works as a therapist and Holly's awesome. And I agree with this because this was actually a thing that Rachel talked about in Girl Stop Apologizing. One of the few things that was actually good information in that book was about how when you're a kid, you see early what your parents reward you for and you start to make that your identity. And she talked about the dangers of that. And here's what Dave is doing with his kids right here is uh, Noah is getting no attention from him until she starts uh, showing interest in, oh, dad, what's a webinar? Tell me about webinars, dad. Instead of when she's like, hey, dad, I'm hungry. Can you feed me? When you're four, you should be able to rely on your parents to say, yes, I will get you something to eat instead of, no, first you have to talk to me about webinars. Holly, you are so right about this. And I agree with Melissa here too. If you're tired, then sleep. Dave has not been sleeping. You need to go to sleep. Down the stairs, please. It's just Ford Hollis. It's you know it's Ford Hollis. This is a costume. Ford, give her some space. Okay, and so Ford comes out in a dinosaur outfit. Dave still doesn't give him any attention, and Noah is scared of the outfit because he looks like a big inflatable dinosaur, and she's a small child, and she's scared of the outfit. I mean, here we go. Here we go. This is why. This is why. You know, you guys are like go, oh, just go, go spend time. Oh, go spend time with this. I know what you're saying. Um, anyway, the bottom line is there is a go spend time with this. What does that mean? It's like the, it's, the chat's telling him go spend time with your kids, and he's like, what? My daughter who's whining and my son who's dressed up as a dinosaur? You want me to spend time with that? Like, what? What, Dave? What? A lot. A lot. Hey, I, listen to me. And I want you to hear these words so clearly. No, no, look me in the eye. Look me in the eye. I love you more than any word I ever speak to you could ever fully express. Do you believe that? Do you, wait, no, no, hold on. You're not looking at me. Hold on. Do you believe that? 
Do you believe that I love you? Okay, now let me tell you something about my love. Do you believe that I love you? That's a, that's a weird thing to say to a four-year-old. Do you believe that I love you? If you believe that I love you, then you'll shut the fuck up. I will never, no, no, look at my eyes. I will never, and I mean ever, let anyone that I love be endangered in any way by inflatable dinosaurs. So this dinosaur's not even getting close to you. It's not getting close to you? Nope, it's, it's part of my remit on the planet. Okay, if you're gonna whine like this though, what I will do is ask you to kindly, and I do mean kindly, go sit in the jacuzzi. No. Okay, all right, I'm back, hello everyone. Uh, Mac pointed this out in his video where he was talking about like, oh, Dave is saying, child, if you are going to demand my attention, please go into this, into this water by yourself. He's telling a four-year-old to go sit in water by herself. Meanwhile, Dave knows that water is dangerous because he failed the swimming part of the triathlon. Hello, everyone. Um, the sun is, is, uh, is anyone, is anyone, I know. I would just go spend time with him. I know. Miserable dad I am. Um, what was I saying? Someone I in the comments just told Dave to go spend time with the kids, and he read it out loud, and he's like, yeah, I'm a miserable dad. And what was I saying? What was I saying? Oh, um, mo a lot of the book, a whole bunch of the book is about self. The relationship you have. Look at the dinosaurs going back inside. This silly dino. Please don't knock my drapes off the rings and the rods. Um, this relationship that you end up having with yourself is everything. Whether you have, right, whether you have belief in yourself, whether you have uh, the courage to listen and trust your intuition, all of that. Right, all of that is so important. So when someone says, like, and again, like, there's no, this isn't me trying to be like hubris, like, oh, I've written the greatest book of all time. I think it's amazing. It's certainly the greatest thing I've ever written. And is the, dino is the dinosaur coming back? Dinosaur has been evicted. Uh, dinosaur is now going to go to another part of the home where dinosaurs are allowed, but will not come back and bother us. Mark my word. If you see the dinosaur, here's what I need. Don't cry. Just give me like, three taps on the shoulder. I'll jump right in. Okay, three taps on the shoulder. I'll jump right. In. So do you hear right there? Dave repeated twice that if Noah taps him on the shoulder three times, Dave will pay attention to her and and attend to her needs he said if you tap me three times on the shoulder that means i know i will jump right in no you can rest assured for that let's see if dave holds up his end of the bargain which is if my child taps me three times on the shoulder i will pay attention to what she needs um there's just so much there's just so much there's no dinosaur that's a false alarm you can't cry wolf this is honestly you know you know how i feel about crying wolf right I, don't let me tell me tell you the story of when i was at nana's house when i was a kid and it said i was drowning in a jacuzzi and i had to be suspended from all family okay I literally just face palmed right there. I don't want to laugh because, but I don't know what else I can do. Did Dave just say that he had a story of when he was a kid and he told his mom that he was drowning in a jacuzzi. So Dave has acknowledged that drowning in a jacuzzi is a thing that, that is plausible that adults believe can happen. He's acknowledged that that happens. And a minute ago, he just told his four-year-old to sit in a jacuzzi by herself. I, I can't make this shit up. Like, I don't want to laugh because this is horrible. But like, I, can, I, can, I just cannot handle this. Only things forever. Um, okay. Um, everything. So many of the things in the book are about this relationship we have with ourselves. And when you say... Okay, I just counted. She tapped him four times. You have a block or that you're disconnected from feeling like you have permission to chase your, your calling or that you're able to live into the reason why you've been put on the planet. Often, it's because you are still living into and believing stories that have been told to you by someone else that is disconnected from. Hey, Eric, I'm gonna let you parent your kids, brother. I'm gonna go ahead and parent mine. I'm just trying to- So someone named Eric in the comments is telling Dave to please go pay attention to his kids. And he's like, you know what, brother? You can parent your own kids and I'll parent my kids how I want to, which is by talking to people on Instagram. Finish a quick conversation. Uh, yes, this live stream that I'm doing right now, there, it will be available on replay and I will also add timestamps. Now we can't be friends anymore. Um, the, the way that you end up having a relationship with yourself, the end up being. Yep. Okay. All right. Now we're gonna go. Now we're gonna go. Okay. Last time. Last one. I'm doing. Okay. Dave said. Now we're gonna go. So Noah has the expectation. Finally, I get to eat. Finally, Dad, I get to eat. He says. Now we're gonna go. But he said, for the last time, we got we got to do one more thing. One more time. I feel like I'm at the Jerry Lewis telephone. I want so badly for Ed McMahon to still be alive because I want to tell him to go to a tote board. There is no tote board. This isn't even about totes. I'm interested more than anything in making sure that you don't miss an opportunity to have agency in your life and change. Dave, you don't need to keep talking about the book. You told Noah you were going to go. This four-year-old does not have a concept of, okay, well, dad said he's going to go, which really means I need to wait an extra five minutes because he has to He has to first finish talking about, about the book. She doesn't understand that. She thinks you're going to, she's finally going to get to eat. Angel, this book is no joke. I know I have bias. I wrote it. Okay. I, I wrote it. I know I have bias. Yes. Can we tell these people to buy this book real quick? No, don't. I don't want to use you to sell books. Hold on one sec. Stop. You have. He turned to Noah and said, hey, Noah, can you tell people to buy this book real quick? And then he caught himself and was like, no, wait, I don't want to use my daughter to sell books. Despite the fact that he literally wrote a book about his daughter. Oh my I had your two vitamins. I know this game. We're not playing the two more vitamins game. Two more vitamins and not till bedtime. 
It is 9 14. Okay, so Noah wanted some gummy vitamins because she was hungry. She woke up grandpa to go get her vitamins because she can't open the container herself, right? So Dave made her wake up grandpa to get the vitamins because he wouldn't get them for her himself. Now she's demanding more vitamins, which she should not be having. And Dave correctly says that you should not just be continuing to take vitamins. But Dave, have you considered that perhaps the reason she wants more vitamins is that she's hungry? I remember when I was a kid, I took the gummy vitamins too, and you take them right before you eat breakfast because she's expecting that when I eat the vitamins, now I get breakfast and she's still hungry. So she's asking for more vitamins because it's the only food that he's allowed her to eat so far. Olivia, thank you for the super chat says you've been really killing it. Savvy. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much, Olivia. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. In the AM, you've got like 10 hours. I love I love. You got to take three huge breaths and I'll talk to you in a second. Um, this book, I spent a little, about, a little bit more of a year Daddy, on this book. I, love I wrote it for you. Yeah, Dave, we already know that how long you spent on this book and that you wrote it. I, I'm aware. I own the book. I have the book. And meanwhile, Noah's just like, she. you told her she gets to eat. As much as, yes, I uh, got a lot from being able to cathartically walk through what I was processing. And I feel like I'm smarter and a better version of myself for having written it. I also know for sure that I was not the intended recipient. I was not the intended recipient, Noah. I will open it at 7 15 p.m tonight when we get back in our vitamin game you no know, the fda has given a recommendation on the number of vitamins that children get to have okay so this part right here is uh again dave talking to his daughter but it's for his audience it's not for her she doesn't understand the fda has given a recommendation of how many vitamins children can have like dave you can you don't have to give your kid more vitamins nobody wants you to give your kid more vitamins they want you to feed her real food in each day and you ma'am are at your limit i love you enough to say no this is a boundary get a life all right um, so uh the get a life thing really set a lot of people off right wait hold up he needs to talk three <laughs> he's talking to her for his audience when really he should be talking three his child <laughs> oh my god toilet frog i feel like toilet frog reads my brain sometimes because one uh the same dave length right that's what toilet frog said in my chat once that we have the same jokes because we're on the same dave length i love it so the get a life thing i set a lot of people off dave in his uh uh in his responses to people's comments has said that that's he, he and Noah like to have a little sarcastic banter in their relationship and that that was meant as a joke and I get it but like you're denying her food like the context here matters if you were saying uh like if you were joking around with your daughter and like trying to like you beat her in basketball or something and you're like ah, I beat you in basketball get a life no like as a joke and you guys had a back and forth on that first of all she should probably be a little older older to understand that kind of humor but second of all this is not a, a joking situation she's actually hungry and she's demanding food uh Jessa I'm trying to make sure I pronounce your name right Jessica, Jessica, and I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce it. You can correct me in the comments. I'm really sorry, but say keep smashing the patriarchy love videos. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Get a life to a four year old is a very rude thing to say. The, the thing that would be the greatest recognition of me having done well with the gifts that I was given on this planet. Last thing I'm saying, and then I'm done. Okay. But yeah, he's like, go away, child, get a life. What, what, what does get a life even mean to a four year old? Like the four year old, the four year old's life is you. She she only understands what you tell her. She only can eat when you feed her. She is reliant on you for her needs because she is four. She's not even old enough to go to school yet. She's like, Dave, God damn it. If your willingness to buy. Oh, hey, so Rivy is here. Rivy is a preschool teacher. So she's lending some insight. I'm literally on my break from teaching preschool. Uh, and I get to feel superior to Dave's parenting skills despite not being a parent. So we have a lot of parents in the chat also saying that four-year-olds can't really understand sarcasm. And that's, I, I, I probably would agree. I don't know a whole lot of four-year-olds. I have done readings of my books to four-year-olds at schools. And I will say that, you know, you have to talk to them on their level. So like when I do a reading of a Forever Home Friends book, I, uh, if I'm talking to, if I'm reading it to four-year-olds versus if I'm reading it to a class of like, if I'm reading it to a class of like first or second graders, for example, I have discussion questions in the back of the books that I'll do with them. Like, oh, in this book, Chewie's lacking confidence. What does confidence mean? Do you guys know what the word confidence means? Who knows? Oh, someone knows. That's awesome. Can you share with us what the word confidence means? Great. Yes. So where in the book does Chewie learn to be confident? Oh, he learns it right here when this happens, when, when he gets his picture taken at the shelter. Yes. That's so great. Is there a time you felt confident about something? Oh, you felt confident when you won your basketball game last week? Great job, bud. Like, that's how you talk to second graders with it. When I'm reading the book to a four-year-old, 
I'll read the book and uh, to like a class of preschoolers. We'll read the book. And instead of the discussion questions at the end, after the book, I might say, all right, guys, who is your favorite character in the book? You guys like Chewy? Why? Because he was cute? Yeah, that's awesome. Did this book have a bad guy? Yeah, that guy, that guy who hurt Chewy when he was a, a stray dog, he was the bad guy, right? We didn't like him. Who was the good guy in this story? Chewy's the good guy, right? And like, that's how we'll talk about Smile Chewy. It's completely different. You have to talk on a different level to uh, kids of different ages. And how much a kid develops between like four and eight is wild. I Yes, Rivi, preschoolers live in the moment. Noah is about preschool age. And this book, not just buy it. If you're just going to buy it and not read it, don't buy it. I don't want you to buy it and put it on your shelf. But if you are willing to buy this book and actually read this book, you will see things you cannot unsee. You will know things you cannot unknow. Okay? And when you see those things and know those things, it will change the way that you live your life. At the end of my life, when I am trying, when I am trying to put a finger on how well I took the gifts that I was given and used them to affect change in the world, the question of how many people today bought this stinking book and decided to read it will be answered. And so I'm not, I'm not trying to beat you over the head with something that I don't believe in. I just, I'm 100% positive that there is something in this for you. I wrote this for you. I am connected at a very, very deep level. To Dave loves to tell us how much he wrote this book for us, but he clearly wrote this book for himself. Um, and then is there anything more interesting in this? Does he ever, when does he get off the live stream and go make his kid pancakes? And if you decide to do it, fantastic. You'll have a completely fundamentally different life. He's still talking after he told his kid we're going to have pancakes. You will have better pancakes. relationships. And if you don't, you won't. And that's fine. I mean, I mean, it's not fine for you. It's, it's unfortunately, it's not even fine for me because I, I want to try and compel you because I know how powerful this freaking thing is. I want to compel every single one of you to pick it up and read it so that we can get together in this backyard as a crew and you can actually describe in front of my face the changes that you made. See, this, I love when people in the chat have expertise in things and can share it. Zoe, thank you so much for this comment. Zoe says, child development specialist here. Correct. Delivering sarcasm to a four-year-old needs to be exaggerated to confirm humor. Nuance and subtext is not congruent with a small child's growing communication skills. Thank you for that information, Zoe. I greatly appreciate that. Yeah. So if Dave had been, if he was trying to convey sarcasm to her, which like, why are you even being sarcastic when your kid is asking for food and you're not feeding her? I don't know. He's, yeah, exactly. He's kept her waiting for food for like two hours. To your daily routine, changes you made to the habits that we're working, changes you made to the negative. And like I said earlier, two hours feels a lot longer to a child than it feels to an adult. Two hours feels really long. Like I've been on this live stream for two hours and it's been flying by, but as a kid, when you're told two hours, that takes forever. Coping mechanisms that keep you in suffering that you're familiar with, but that don't serve your goals long term. That's it. Yeah, you can keep that. You're a beautiful mermaid. You need that mermaid dress. I'm, no one's taking it. Hey, Ford, mermaid dresses, respectfully, though you can literally do anything you want in life. Right now, mermaid dresses on Noah are not your department. I'm gonna love you all day long. She's gonna go ahead and wear that mermaid dress. All right, y'all, I'm getting ready to go and make us some Mickey Mouse pancakes. I wish I could do something like, if you buy the book, I'll make you pancakes. I'll tell you what, I'll make some extra pancakes. Send my back, we'll see if any of you guys show up. I love you all, this is the long- If you buy the book, I'll make you pancakes, or you could just make your kids pancakes. Live. I've literally ever done. Who's coming to make pancakes with me? Let's go. All right, they're finally making pancakes. After two fucking hours, they're finally making pancakes. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> finally making pancakes after two hours so now let's head over to dave's instagram dave kept so dave put this stream up right saturday morning uh the day before halloween he put this live stream up that saturday morning and uh it stayed up for a long time like i i was in new orleans and i was out and couldn't download it so i posted on the your morning guru subreddit and and on the uh, the Hollis company subreddit and asked people if they could, if someone had that had it for me and someone sent me that link to the Captain Dave's shipwreck thing. Um, I asked people if they could record it for me because I'm like, he's going to realize how bad this is at some point and he's going to take it down. It took him a long time. It took him a long time. It was up for pretty much the entirety of that day. And then he finally took it down. So we're going to take a look now at, uh, I can take off the headphones for now because we don't have any audio here. Ugh. We're going to take a look now at his uh, Instagram post where he made an apology. So I, I, I will say, I try not to be too hard on people apologizing on the internet because I feel like the internet is a ruthless place. When you when you mess up on the internet, there's pretty much no apology you could possibly do that can satisfy the people who are mad at you because no matter what, people will find something wrong with it. But we're still gonna we're still gonna to look at it anyway. Um, I'm gonna blow out this candle. Hold on. Awesome. So let's take a look at his apology. So Dave uh, wrote right here. 
Hi friends, quick note to acknowledge something from the weekend I'm just so disappointed in. Something that's rightly left people upset for the way my words and tone made them feel. It's so disconnected from who I aspire to be and how I hope to consistently serve that I want to be clear in owning that I was wrong and offer an apology. This sentence is just, I, I'm sorry, I know I said I shouldn't criticize the way people talk on social media. I'm not always grammatically correct on social media or in live streams. I just talk off the cuff, but this is uh this is just hard to read i did an instagram live on saturday morning where the passion i have for this book came off in such an embarrassing and inappropriate way okay so he's clearly from the rachel's school of apologies they clearly learned they clearly learned apologies from the same place which is rachel's book girl stop apologizing um so let's talk about the passion i have for this book came off in an embarrassing and inappropriate way all right sexy english teacher time we're going to take a look at this sentence right here. It's got, here's an independent clause. Independent clause is I did an Instagram live on Saturday morning. Subject is I, verb is did, uh, verb object is Instagram live, prepositional phrases on Saturday morning. This independent clause looks good. Now let's look at the dependent clause in this sentence. Where the passion I have for this book came off in such an embarrassing and inappropriate way. So this is a dependent clause that's part of this sentence, but a dependent clause also has a subject and a verb. So let's talk about the subject in this. What is the subject of the clause? Someone someone, tell me the subject of the clause. Uh, just kidding, I, I, we're not actually in class, although we could, we could do it like we're in class. <laughs> we could do this like we're in class. The subject of this clause, right, is the passion. The passion is the subject for the clause. I have for this book, right? So I there's also a subject and verb in here because this is, um, I believe this is, is this an adjectival? Yeah, this is an adjectival phrase right here. This adjectival phrase modifies passion. So this is an adjectival phrase modifying passion, right? Um, anyway, so passion is the subject of the clause. The verb of this clause is came off. So he's talking about, so the, the subject of the sentence is the passion. He's placing the focus on his passion, not on himself, his passion. That's how we know when we break down the sentence and we see that the subject of this clause is not, is not me. It's not, I did an Instagram live where I was super rude to my followers. It's not, I did an Instagram live where I went off at everybody. No, it's, it's came off, came off as the verb which means that uh, if he, that means he's, that it, it came off. It didn't, the passion didn't do anything. The passion just came off a certain way. So we can tell by looking at Dave's subjects and verbs in this sentence that he thinks his, his passion just came off wrong. His passion came off wrong. He didn't, he didn't blow up at his followers. He didn't, he didn't uh, rudely deny his kids food on a stream. His passion came off wrong. You can see that from the, the wording of that sentence right there. Uh, let's continue. I suggested that I didn't understand how you could follow me and not buy a book. So let's take a look again. Subject of this clause, I. All right, we're on the right path. Dave says I. I should be the subject of the sentence in your apology. So he's on the right. But then let's look at the main verb of the sentence, suggested. So the verb suggested usually means that you maybe implied something, or it doesn't usually mean that you explicitly told people something. He's just using the verb suggested. I suggested that I didn't understand. No, you explicitly yelled at your audience. You could say, I screamed that I didn't understand how you could follow me and not buy my book. I explicitly declared. <laughs> yeah, suggested is not the right verb there, Dave. That is a very carefully chosen verb that you chose based on the fact that you're hoping not everyone saw the full thing because it was down at this point. He said, took it a step further and said that if you didn't want to get one, you should unfollow me. All right, at least he's using said as the verb here, not suggested or implied or maybe hinted at. I mean, who in the world says that? Uh, you say that, Dave. I, I get what he means by who in the world says that. It's like, oh, I did something. I, who even does that? Like, I get that he's kind of talking to himself there and that he feels bad about what he did is what he's trying to come off. But it's like, yeah, you, you do that. That's who does that. I don't recognize the person in the video. That is some Shane Dawson shit right there. You guys remember Shane Dawson's apology videos where he's like, that person in those videos who was doing blackface, like, 
I don't even know that guy anymore. Like, no, it was you, dude. Like, I understand if you're trying to say, I want to be a better person than this. My my views have changed. My worldview has changed. My actions have changed. And I don't want to perpetuate these messages anymore. But to say, I don't even know. No, it was still you. You still messed up. You, The people who were hurt were still hurt because of you. So I don't recognize the person in this video. Everyone recognized you in the video, Dave. Um... When we, when we were reacting to this on your morning guru to this apology, we were like, let's read Dave's apology. It says, I did not fuck my cat. I did not come on my cat. I didn't put my dick anywhere near my cat. That's basically Dave's apology here. He's like, I did not fuck my Instagram life. I did not want my divorce. <laughs> exactly. Your kids recognize you in the video. Um. So he says, don't know in what universe this would be okay. It's not. I knew it when it was done and I took it down quickly and it's worth a response. So he's saying here that he knew it was wrong as soon as he was done. So for people who didn't see this live, they might think, oh, you know, they might think it was like Rachel's toilet gate TikTok where she goes, what makes you think I want to be relatable in a 60 second TikTok? That is not what happened. Dave was on, on stream for two hours if you realized as soon as you were done how wrong this was, why did you continue for two hours? He could have stopped at any point, especially when everyone in the audience was telling him, hey, Dave, get off of the live stream and, and go be with your kids. Dave, get off the live. Everyone was telling him and he still kept going for two hours. So if he realized as soon as he was done, why did he continue for that long? And then over here, he's like, uh, I took it down quickly. No, you did not. It was up for an entire day. It was up all day long. Anyway. Okay, this is... <laughs> Where do I have Cancel Sean Boston? I gotta go get Cancel Sean Boston. I have it around here somewhere. Um, it, it doesn't matter. I read it on the Your Morning Guru stream. So what is so funny is when RK and I wrote Cancel Sean Boston as a parody of internet drama. Well, not like a parody. It's it's meant to be a real book. But we wrote it as um, kind of a, a romantic comedy based on internet drama, right? And Sean Boston, who is the internet influencer villain of the book, what we had him say, like, as supposed to be, like, kind of a, like, look how intentionally and obviously manipulative this is, is, like, literally what Dave says. We read this from the book during our stream uh, earlier this week. So Dave says right here, what I see is a scared little boy that still gives into it. Whoa, what happened? Oh, sorry. I, okay, he says, <laughs> what I see is a scared little boy that still gives into his fear that I'd be show up in a way I'm just so embarrassed of. I've often mentioned it. Both. So this whole, I'm just a scared little boy thing is like exactly what Sean Boston, our fictional villain says in the book. It's on page 125 if you have the book because we were reading this on the stream. Uh, and we actually were having Sean the puppet do, like right before this apology came out, we had just filmed with Sean the puppet reading this for our video that we were filming of him. And then he's like, so this is in the in the context of our book. It's right after Sean is accused of stealing art for his album cover. He's accused of plagiarizing the art and gets exposed videos made on him. And he makes his response video. And he's like, guys, I didn't steal the art. I promise. Sometimes I, I just have such a hard time because I still feel deep down like I'm just that little boy from Indiana who's trying to make it in the big mean city of Los Angeles. Like, that's what he says in the book. And Dave basically is like, I'm just a scared little boy. Like, it's insane how much like art imitates life and life imitates art, you guys. I'm wondering if Dave has read Cancel Sean Boston at this point. Oh my God. Um, so anyway, he says, this step backward is one that my time with my therapist will hopefully help me better understand how and why I acted the way I did in the pressure of a launch. I've had 11 book launches, Dave, and I've never acted that way. And that's not to say that Dave, Dave should absolutely work this out with the therapist. But oh, man. Oh, man. 
He says, to be clear, I value every single one of you who chooses to be here and the luxury of your community comes with no contingency. You don't ever need to do anything to be here, be it buy a book or anything else. I understand and support anyone who decides that they want to unfollow me after my ridiculous invitation to do so. I'm not sure I deserve your presence, but I know I'll continue to work to show that unrecognizably scared, exhausted foot and mouth version Saturday is viewed. Wait, what the fuck is the sentence? What the fuck is the sentence? Dave was so mad about people calling his book Word Salad on Amazon reviews, but like, what else would you call this? I'm not, okay, but I know I'll continue to work to show that unrecognizably scared, exhausted foot and mouth version Saturday is viewed as an exception. What the fuck is the sentence, Dave? Oh my God. Is Dave's therapist his, well, I mean, his therapist is also named Dave, so I don't know. Um... So, okay, I think he's trying to say, okay, I got to just read the sentence differently. I'll continue to work to show that, to show that, I can't, I cannot, I cannot put the sentence together. Um, anyway, there's no excusing it. I just have to do better. Uh, I agree with that part. That part's true. Um, but the, he keeps trying to make this out to be like a foot and mouth situation. It was two hours, Dave is two hours with people telling you to get off of the stream. Oh my God. So um, then he says, he offers his sincerest apologies. Um, and then a lot of the people who are saying like that they're forgiving him didn't actually watch it. They like didn't see the stream. They're like, I didn't see it, but I forgive you, Dave. You're great. I love you. Um, Anyway, when how do I win the American flag socks? He hasn't responded. Uh, anyway, so that's Dave's apology that he had. And then from there, he has started his book club. And he has posted three episodes of his book club. So when you guys hear the word book club, or the phrase book club, what do you think? I usually think of a group of people all talking about a book together, having a conversation about what they thought about the book, how they interpreted the book, what they're going to take away from the book. But basically a book club implies that there are people together having a conversation. Let's take a look at Dave's book club, which is just him shouting at people on Instagram live, just as he's always done. I think I'll be able to pause this this time because of, because it's a replay now. All right, here we go. All right, yes, I can pause now. Awesome. So Built Through Courage Book Club, day one of 40. Good morning. It's the start of our 40 days of book club. I'm wondering like if Dave got mad that I said in my review that I've been hosting a successful morning show, like, cause that was his goal. He was like, I, my wife and I will host a successful morning show and podcast. And I was like, I actually accomplished that. Not with my wife. I don't have a wife. I have a best friend that I host a podcast with uh, and morning show. But I was like, I basically accomplished Dave's goal for him. And I'm just uh, I'm like, is this uh, is this something that he's like mad about? And he's like, you know what? I'll do I'll do a morning show. too. I'll do it. I'll do a morning show. I'll compete with you, Savvy. I don't think Dave knows who I am. That was a joke. Well, good Wednesday morning. It Can is. I turn up the speed on this? Let me see. Yes. One and a half. Wednesday. It is the first day, first day of our Built Through Courage book club. It is uh, hopefully going to be 40 really, really great days of us diving into, unpacking, and walking through this book page by page, chapter by chapter. Uh, I am so, so grateful for you. I feel like social media influencers are always redefining words. Like they're making, this isn't book club. This is a video. It's like when people say we're going to have a course, it's like, you didn't give me a course. You gave me a video. <laughs> this is what I don't get is when people are just like, um, they're just saying that videos are like trying to make them sound like more interactive things than they are. Like, why isn't he on Instagram live? People can request to join and you can add them. Why isn't he adding people to his stream to let them come in? Like, like I said before, when we do book clubs on Your Morning Guru, we sometimes do Friday book discussions. And when we have a book discussion, we post on our subreddit to invite people to come in and watch and not just watch, to come in on camera and discuss the book with us. We'll post in our subreddit and say, this was the book we read this week. Who else has read this book? And if you've read it, 
uh, we'll send you a link to join the live stream so you can talk about it out loud with us if you want. And those are very interesting discussions. One of my favorites was when we read You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero, which you guys know I do not like that book. I did a review of it on my on this channel. And when we were following her for a week on Your Morning Guru, that Friday, we're like, all right, we're going to do a book review day for You Are a Badass. We know a lot of you guys have read this book. Here's the link to join the stream. If you've read it, people who have read the book, join the stream. And we all had a big discussion about what different people took away from this book. And it was really interesting because there were like five people on stream all having this discussion. Um being here and I'm excited for the way that we will dive into this. Uh, you may have seen that uh, yesterday I put up a post uh, acknowledging uh, a Saturday that I, you know, man, I put my foot in my mouth. I, I just wish that I had better. He just keeps trying to brush this off as like a foot in mouth moment. You don't put your foot in your mouth for two hours. If you have your foot in your mouth for two hours, you're gonna get a fungal infection on your tongue, Dave. Since uh, I wish that I had said some things a little bit differently in Alive, uh, but I'd be remiss to not start this conversation real quick with uh, the acknowledgement that man, sometimes when we choose courage, uh, we still find ourselves overwhelmed by our fear. Yeah, uh, they're gonna be time. Okay, not everything has to be a learning lesson. Like, oh, this is the thing that I, I I don't like about the motivational industry is that every single thing is a lesson and it's a it's it's all part of my thing that I'm teaching you. It's like so on Saturday, I was a big asshole. And I can just use this as an example of how sometimes we're going to fail and sometimes we're going to make mistakes. And here's what we can learn. It's like, Dave, this is not a learning tool. You should not be trying to teach from what you did there. You should be being like, you know what? I'm going to fucking therapy for that. And we're not going to like, there's no reason to try to teach people from that. That is something you did like a couple days ago. Oh my God. Times when you choose to walk into something that you feel called into and that little scared child that still lives inside of you is going to rear its ugly head and is gonna convince you that you need to work nonstop forever and ever until you hit a point of exhaustion. Or that uh, you ought to try and convince people to get excited about your book the way that you're excited about your book through the wrong means. And I just, uh, I wanna acknowledge, hey, I, uh, I love y'all. And I just appreciate so much that uh, we have been in community the way that we have for as long as we have. And it's a thing I will never ever take for granted. I don't take for granted. And, uh, and I appreciate that as much as and say so you will never take it for you have taken it for granted you took it for granted on saturday and it's like okay to say you know what on saturday i reflecting on this and i realized i took it for granted on saturday i i took this community for granted and looking back i let myself get caught up in in this and i took it for granted and that was wrong with me and instead he's like i will never take this for granted. you already did though like stop trying to erase what you did man i wish i could take back foot and mouth exhausted dave um the only thing that i can do is try and focus my passion into us having a conversation now and uh, an attempt to just deliver a ton of value over time such that uh, maybe a thing like Saturday ends up looking like a, a wild anomaly and a reflection of fear more than uh, anything else. So, I mean, it was it was two straight hours. I'm glad that you're here. I appreciate you being here. Uh, today, we are gonna dive into the introduction of this book. Uh, we're gonna have a conversation. Good Lord, why is he still so slow on one and a half speed? Can I put him on, I'm putting him on 1.75. 1, 1. Uh, each, each day about a book uh, or a chapter or a part of the book uh, inside of the study guide as it were. Uh, we are going to dive in each day with some directed journaling prompts. And uh, I thought today, rather than uh, talking uh, about the book, I'm gonna just start by reading a little bit of it. And then uh, oh, as Dave, we go, we don't we'll want, stop. No, okay, so this is the thing, Dave's like, why don't you buy my book? And it's like, well, because you read the entire thing on live streams out loud. Why would anyone need to buy our book when you're reading the whole thing out loud to them? Have a little bit of a conversation and uh, and go from there. Thank you, Heather. I see that. I appreciate that. Worth is not tied to sales. I know this. I know this. I know this. And yet um, there is something interesting um, in fear that starts telling you lies in the midst of attempting to bring your goodness to, to light. And uh, and sometimes listening to those lies, whoo, it, uh, it can... Uh, it can that's the thing. That's the thing. He's trying to make this into like, oh, I listened to the lies my fears were telling me. Like, yes, you did. And that is something to work on in therapy because anxiety is a real issue that you that real therapist should work on with you. But you're over here like, yeah, and here's the lesson about about why we shouldn't allow our feel. I learned this lesson in real time. I'm sorry that it's not it's not cheating. I bought the book. I bought it. It's not cheating. I bought the book. <laughs> Trick you into thinking things that are not worthy of being thought. All right, I start this book with a letter to you, the reader. I'll read it now. Dear reader, fear has been among the strongest and most consistent emotions of my entire life. I grew up the most afraid kid in school where worry... Fear is among us, fungus is among us, fungus is on Dave's feet, which are in his mouth. ...was my love language. I'm willing to admit that long after school ended, fear was still there running the show. I say this to acknowledge that the decision to write a book about cultivating courage is something that makes me a little self-conscious. 
when I think about the contrast of who I've been, the way I've given power to fear. Also, I read this whole book and it's not really about courage that much. It's really, it's he keeps talking about courage, but really the book is just about... I still don't really know what it's about. I read I read the book. I still, other than ships in the harbor and sailing the sea and having a map, and um, Dave knew Beyonce once. And like other like, there's not really a lot of courage in this book at all. There's Dave brags a lot about what a good ally he is, despite stealing his wife's company. Um, and yeah, you're over my life. I've been a mix of good and bad, strong and weak, disciplined and inconsistent. I've had seasons in my life where I was extraordinarily proud of the way I showed up and plenty of time in the last five years where the challenges of stepping into who I was meant to be brought out things that weren't my best. Hello. My mistakes were often fueled by fear, usually in desperate need of courage to course correct. There's only one way I can help you understand how to create courage you need for this life. It's by talking honestly about the times when being courageous produced good outcomes as well as when a lack of courage kept me. Okay, is he just going to keep reading to us? Because this is not what a book club is. A book club is not somebody reading the book to you. If, if, you're, if his expectation in this book club is that people are going to have already bought and read the book and he wants to have a book discussion with them and work through this PDF with them. Why is he spending time reading the book out loud? You should expect that people have already read the book or that they have it and can read along with you. Why are you wasting all this time? I think he's just trying to fill content space, honestly. Can I skip ahead? Is he still reading? Begins to feel like something normal. It's a good thing for anyone to just think about as we go through the 40 days of this book club. What in your life has become normal? And by normal, I mean it's stopped challenging you. It's stopped pushing you to, because of it having previously been difficult or, or something that required you to struggle through it, um, it's now allowed you to stop growing. Because when uh, that normal happens for too long a period of time, you stop growing. And growth is a big part of how we become. That's it. Stepping into calling. How we become what? Growth is a part of how we become. Oh, now he's talking about his ship in the harbor. I think this is so funny because Dave talks all the time about how he has a tattoo right here that says a ship in the harbor is safe, but that's not what ships are built for. I also have a tattoo right there that I've had for a while. And it says it was a huge mistake and also great for views. And it's a quote from Hank Green from his book, An Absolutely Remarkable Thing. And I just think it's such a funny quote because of the way the conjunction and is used. Like you would normally expect that sentence to be like, it was a huge mistake, but it was great for views, but it's, it was a huge mistake and also great for views, which in a way is me getting involved in Dave Hollis's life is a huge mistake and also great for views. So look at how full circle we just brought that. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. I love it. This, I mean, the illustrations in this book are one of my favorite things. Uh, Aaron Tinsley, fantastic artist, ended up drawing a bunch of fantastic pieces of art for this book. Uh, and the first one is a picture of me holding up my tattoo. And uh, it's where we start the book properly. Unmoored. At least it's not the ally tattoo. Dude, his ally tattoo is fucking cringe. A ship in harbor is safe, but that's not what ships are built for. I have this quote tattooed on my right forearm. It is my mantra. I have a constant reminder that this life that I want exists outside of my comfort zone. The only way I can evolve into the person that I want to be for myself and my family. Okay, so he's still just reading his book again. He's just reading it in chronological order. Why are you reading your... Like, people can get this on Audible. And end of 2019, I made this bold declaration. 2020 is going to be the best year of my life. I made this, you know, like, yes, it's going to be the best year of my life. And I had saved it for my 45th year on the planet. And what I didn't appreciate in the declaration was that I wouldn't get a say in the conditions through which my best year would come together. Right? I made that declaration and didn't appreciate that, oh, no, just because you want that thing to come together and even do what you can to engineer that to come together, it doesn't mean that you get a say necessarily in the way that it actually comes together. If you're a person of faith, I've had this experience certainly in the last couple of years, my hardest and best happening at the same time. I pray, and then I'd be disappointed that my prayers weren't answered in a way that was connected to convenience for me, or that was connected- Yeah, he has a whole chapter in this book where he talks about the Garth Brooks song, Unanswered Prayers, which is a good song. I like, I love Garth Brooks. Garth Brooks is my favorite country artist, uh, but Dave uh, is uses it to make some bigger meaning about something. To the way- Honestly, Sarah, it, I, I kind of want to write a book based on my tattoos. I feel like tattoos have a lot of interesting stories, but his tattoos are just about ships and about being an ally and sailing the ally ship. I was hoping that they might be answered. And I can tell you, you know, with the benefit of time and some perspective that happens in going through hard things over, you know, an 18 month, two year kind of a time horizon. So many of my prayers were answered. So many of my prayers were answered. They just weren't answered in the way that I wish they were answered. And that's the way prayers work. That's the way that, you know, casting a, a vision or making a big declaration works. You just don't get a say necessarily in the conditions that will do it. Right. Yeah. Thanks, Kim. You know, God doesn't always answer our fans, answer our prayers. No, they want. I agree with this. So, you got to start with this belief that you were built for the choppiness that exists outside. I just think this would be so much more interesting if he invited the viewers to come onto the stream or did like a call-in show where people could share their thoughts. That'd be so much more interesting. I would love that. Maybe we'll do a call-in in a little bit since I'm, 
I, all I'm doing today is live streaming and playing Animal Crossing. So. Right, of your safe harbor, that leaving comfort for growth is part and parcel with how you might in fact grow and learn and you know, in some ways acquire the things that are necessary to get a step closer to purpose and that you were built for, that you have already what you need to handle the unsteadiness, the uneasiness. That so, Anne, I've talked about this, about how, okay, so his tattoo says Ally, and it's like right here, and I was considering getting a tattoo right here that says Allie, because Allie's my dog that passed away in 2019, and I was going to get a tattoo for her right here, but Dave ruined that for me, so I'm going to get something else for her instead. Um, and I already have this one. I can't, I can't let myself turn into Dave. I'm already getting my boob job like Rachel, although... Yeah, I guess both of us got our boobs made smaller in our boob job. So there we go. Rachel and I are going to be boob job buddies pretty soon. That exists outside of comfort because you are equipped for it. So you, you are, as I, as I say, a ship that is meant for those choppy waters. All right. The next little part of the introduction is a section called A Power Greater Than Yourself. <clears throat> there is something bigger than us in every storm we face. You may call it God or Buddha or Allah. You may chalk it up to intuition, the universe, or some sort of Jedi magic. It's that profound feeling in your gut. Gotta drop that Jedi reference in there. Gotta remind us you sold the Star Wars films, Dave, didn't you, bud? But he's over here like, everything, the Jen Sincero does this and you are a badass too, and I hate this. And it's like this idea that like, you have to believe in a higher power. I, I'm not saying you have to believe in my God, but you have to believe in some God. Now, I would consider myself a fairly agnostic person. I... I'm totally open to the possibility that there could be God. I'm open to the possibility that there might not be. I just really don't know. And it doesn't influence my life that much. But Dave is very into like, you have to believe in some higher power. It can be, it, you, it doesn't matter which religion you have to choose one. Like Dave, let's just let people live their life, dude. Self-proclaimed ally is like a self-proclaimed nice guy. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's like, it's, I think it's one thing to call yourself an ally if you're like in a position where you want someone to know that you're on their side. Like if you're in a in a situation where someone is actively experiencing some prejudice and you're like, I will be an ally to you in this situation and I will stand up for you and you want them to know that. But just calling yourself an ally over and over again in your book, but then like in your actions, like pressuring a woman into giving you the CEO title of her company... Uh, the, the whole thing with the fishing trip that I talked about in the review last week where Dave, um, who was it, Lewis Howes, uh, went, uh, took of all the men in the personal development sphere on a fishing trip, including Dave, and did not invite Rachel exclusively because she's a woman because they wanted it to be a guy's trip. And Dave, Dave went on this trip and did not invite Rachel, who's really the one who's in the motivational sphere, onto this trip. He let her be excluded from networking on the basis of gender alone and did nothing about it. That, is that what an ally would do? Like the fact that he let he let the artist of his tea time with Noah book make his daughter look whiter than him when she is mixed race and he is white. Is that what an ally would do? So Dave just like calls himself an ally, but in the moment where he actually has the power to try to make something better, he doesn't do it. It's ridiculous. It's trying to get your attention. The seeming that seemingly already knows something you need, the direction you should take, even as it might not yet be completely clear to you. It's that tug on your heart, a longing in the recesses of your soul. No matter how hard you fight to quiet it, it just won't go away. When you connect to it, listen to it, make a relationship with it, you appreciate that the outcome ahead is not exclusively in our hands. The question is, can you open yourself up to willingly consider that the whisper you hear repeated in the depths of your being already knows how you'll make it through? It's there pleading in hopes that you'll finally believe it enough to listen. An important piece of this journey, right, I'm suggesting the journey is, Appreciating that you have to have some agency over your life, take action to push comfort. Hey, that's a good point. Insisting that his poor followers, his followers who don't have a job, have to buy his book if they can't afford it. Is that what an ally would do? Is that someone who's an ally to people of a lower socioeconomic status would do? I don't think so, Dave. You're just trying to exploit them. You become accustomed to a way and start moving forward in a direction that, of course, is going to be disarming and disorienting, but will help you grow. An important piece of this journey is trusting in a power greater than yourself to be your guiding force letting go of the need for a tidy explanation for everything that happens to you and around you. You wouldn't be reading this book, probably wouldn't be here right now, if there wasn't a part of you that was curious about how a bigger, better, more fulfilled version of you might come. Okay, so he's just reading his book. We're 20 minutes into this, and he's still just reading it. Let's go ahead and now. In that moment. Especially he's still just reading it. What's happening now? Wow. It was like such a, an invitation for grace. It was just such a, like, normalizing, hey, this thing, this thing is the thing that happens to entrepreneurs. This is less about uh, anyone having the ability to necessarily Let's go towards the end and see if he's still reading. Oh, no, he's talking Life, now. You are attempting to build. What is it that sits outside of something that you are currently familiar with or that feels um, a little bit disorienting for you to have to uh, head out and go pursue? What is that thing? And whatever that thing ends up being, I want you to like, spend some time writing it down because the second thing that you're going to do is 
ask the question, who could afford you some perspective in this area of your life? Who can normalize a little bit of how it's going to feel when you decide to start taking those courageous steps into this new scary place? And so to the extent that you can, really spend a little time, right? Like I'm going to argue, and part of what we're going to talk about in the next couple of days is uh, the importance of stillness, right? If there was a way for you to get still, have, uh, you know, outside of the noise that life tends to traditionally run on, an opportunity to really think about, all right, where in my life am I currently feeling a little more comfortable than I should? Where in my life have I not yet listened enough to that voice inside that's begging me to pay closer attention to it and the calling? Where would it lead me to, right? Where would it lead me to? I'm spending Okay, so now he's just like talking in business guru magnetic poetry as usual. I kind of love that he has a hat with his book title on it. I kind of want to get a hat with my book title on it now. I don't know. Which book title should I put on a hat? You guys let me know. I have, of all my books, which title should I put on a hat? I feel like Cancel Sean Boston would work. We do have Cancel Sean Boston merch. It's on a tote bag and a mug. And, oh, we do have we do have hats, but they don't have the book titles on them. They say Big Titty Goth GF, and they say Big Rick Energy. Our Cancel Sean Boston merch is very ugly, but if you're interested in it, let me know. Um, but Dave has this uh, uh, Built Through Courage hat. Like, should I get a hat that says Savvy Business Owner on it? Actually, that'd be kind of a cool hat because it's like a Savvy is an adjective, so it would work. Oh. All right. So he's got the Built Through Courage hat. Good morning. Good morning, Dave. It is Thursday morning, Thursday morning, and we are continuing a 40-day Built Through Courage book club. Go and check. I think I th honestly think the reason that he's reading so much from his book is that he promised to fill 40 days. Man, I don't get it. I don't get it. Uh, so this is his, his book club. Is he just going to keep reading from the book? Of sailing off of someone else's map. And I have been talking a lot in the interviews I'm doing for the book about this recognition that I have had that for so many years, for like 20 years, I was climbing a ladder inside of corporate America where... Uh, anyway, he just talked about ladders there. I'm kind of done with his book club. It's very boring. So that's that's about where Dave is at right now. I don't think there's been anything new that's come out since then. Now that we've talked about Dave for like three hours, I was at first like, I'm just going to get through everything real quick and then we'll go to the comments. And it's been over three hours and I still I just finished getting through everything that Dave did. Um, anyway, anyway, that's uh, that's about it for for Dave. We'll uh, take a look at what's going on in the chat in just a minute. Um, if you choose to read this book, don't take a shot every time he says unmoored, catalyst, anchor, ship, uh, a bunch of those other words. He uses the same words a lot. Don't take a shot because you will die. Don't do it. Um, anyway, I think that's about it for today on this. If some new updates come out, I will do another stream. I'd like to... Uh, thank you guys real quick for being on this live stream with me. I know it's been a long time and like, there's been a lot of you guys, we've had over 700 people here for like the past two hours and that's incredible. So I just want to thank you guys so much for being here with me today on this live stream, especially because I know a lot of people prefer, uh, edited videos, but again, because I got back from new Orleans Wednesday evening, I, if I were to make this video, I would have had to make, make this whole thing, edit this whole thing all yesterday. And that would have been very stressful. I would have been up all night and it would have not been good, especially because Tyler and I had concert tickets and we were excited to go to that. So I just didn't have time to do that. So I really appreciate that you guys, uh, had, were here with me for this live stream. Uh, by the way, I just want to, since I talked about the ugly cancel Sean Boston merch, I just want to show it to you guys. Um, if you're interested in any merch, you can follow me and not buy my merch. I don't give a fuck. You can just be here, and I appreciate that from you. But this is uh, the this is the Your Morning Guru uh, merch over here. And then here is our ugly Cancel Sean Boston merch. So we've got an ugly tote bag. We've got uh, ugly hats that we put upside. We made the sayings upside down just because we thought it would be funny. And then we have a Cancel Sean Boston mug. And I will be later today or this weekend, I will be listing... Um, it will be listing signed copies of Cancel Sean Boston on the merch site to buy. I also now have uh, signed copies of 90s Kids available on my main merch site. And then as soon as I hit 
As soon as I hit 30,000, I wonder if I have hit 30,000 because there were a lot of people here. So let me check on that. Um, but you can get signed copies of 90s Kids or Confessions of a Teenage Band Geek, which I didn't write that book, but I edited that book. You can get signed copies of these on my merch site if you're interested. But you can follow me without buying my book because I love you guys. We're getting Deep Dave merch as soon as I hit 30,000 subs. Let me check on the sub count and see where we are because I'll drop that as soon as we do. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm close. Let's find out. How many subs do I have? Ooh, I am like, I am like 80, 82 subs away. I'm less than hundred subs away. So once, uh, once I hit 30 K, which is going to be less than hundred people. Uh, once we hit that, I will, this is coming soon. I will release the, the deep Dave merch and the other new merch items, including the big titty tomboy shirt and the gender non-conforming girl boss shirt. Uh, but that is the merch site. I appreciate it. I unfortunately will not make you Mickey Mouse pancakes. I'm not very good at cooking. Um, if you want me to send you some signed dirty socks, I will not do that because uh, this is not only fans. <laughs> Anyway, guys, thank you so much for being here today. I'm going to go uh, work on some other stuff. I'm currently working on revamping my website. I've got to work on some videos for next week. I think next Friday we're going to review Jensen Cheryl's money book, which is not good. It's not good. We're going to review Jensen Cheryl's money book, I think, next week. And then I will start getting ready to work on the 12 Daves of Christmas. I might skip a few weeks in November. I'm not sure yet. I might because I might be doing, or maybe I'll do them as live streams because I'm going to be doing so much editing for the 12 Daves of Christmas, assuming that I can get that done. I might not be able to get that done as I'm also doing NaNoWriMo. Anyway, uh, I will see you guys again on Monday. I'll do another live stream on my channel on Monday because there's some publishing industry bullshit going down. Uh, so we'll talk about some book publishing industry drama and all that like we usually do on Monday. Uh, and then on Friday, we'll do a big book review video premiere. Um, thank you all for supporting small businesses. Thank you all for being here with me. If you want more coverage of the Dave Hollis situation, I highly recommend checking out Kia's World. I highly recommend checking out Mac Attack and I highly recommend checking out Camellia. I love all three of these people. They're wonderful creators and uh, they did a great job covering the situation as well. So thank you guys all for being here. I will see you Monday. Uh, subscribe to your morning guru. Uh, we'll be there on Monday. We're going to follow Darman. I think that'll be funny. Anyway, see you then. Bye, friends. I love